Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another season of Ohio Esports. I'm here tonight with Nick B. Hi. My name is Jeff. I'm the director of the Ohio Esports program, and I want to welcome you back to a new season, especially with our opening against Kent State tonight. So playing some Valorant, Ohio University versus Kent State. Nick, mm -hmm. what do you expect? Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty like interesting matchup. Both these teams have been historically pretty good at Valorant, especially pretty strong showings uh, last year and the year before. So. Should be pretty close and a pretty like top tier matchup. You can see the games getting played tonight and while the teams are getting ready and everyone's queuing up, I just wanted to say a couple of quick things. First, I want to say thank you as always to Red Bull for being a partner with us, sharing some drinks on our on our behalf. And also wanted to announce that we have a brand new sponsor uh, starting this season. We've got a sponsorship deal with Ohio University Credit Union, OUCU Financial, who are gonna be uh, helping us out along the way. So you'll see their sign coming up on the wall. Uh, here over the coming weeks and a little bit of uh, changes in our presentation and our promotion. So thanks OUCU Financial for being a partner, helping us out and making this season a success. Mm -hmm. And so let's just hope the team can match it. Yeah, no, and stuff like that's just such a big buzz for the club. You know, it's super exciting to hear about official sponsorships and stuff like that. And, you know, the support that we're going to get from them for the club. It's really exciting. Yeah, and it's, it's all the work of the students. The students have put in so much work over the years to make this program a success. And so it's great to see uh, people recognizing that. And yeah, like I said, OUC Financial sees it, mm -hmm. sees the potential. And we're going to have some, a lot of fun working with them over the, the coming years. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to uh, take a little break while the teams do map picks and things like that. And we'll be right back. Uh, we're going to switch out. I'll be replaced by another Nick. So we'll have two Nicks tonight working the desk. So uh, once again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to our partners and sponsors. And uh, let's go Bobcats. Yep, go Bobcats.
Guys, welcome back to the broadcast. Sorry about that short little delay. We got Nick up here. Not Hello. confusing. I'm B. He's I'm, C. I'm Nick, and he's Nick. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up, Nick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we got another really exciting season of Valorant. Honestly, just kicking off the first varsity game of the year is kind of like the real starting point for the club, if I'm being honest. This is the first day that our arena was open. Uh, opened at 2 today. Um, and just kind of every varsity, every year, first game of Varsity Valorant just happens to be that first kind of day of getting everything kickstarted for the club. So really exciting day here. Uh, it's going to be a great year and we hope to kind of kick it off with a win against a good team in Kent State. Absolutely. Uh, we're sitting on a pretty new roster I hear too. Yeah, no, out of what? That's three of three, five new, three players. new players. Yeah. yeah. Um, only returning players are, are Paca and uh, Cilantro who Paco was there last year, and same with Cilantro, but I believe due to just some other outside um, interference, he couldn't really play that many games. So you might recognize him from last year, definitely recognize him from the year before. Um, but yeah, we got three new players today. Absolutely. Uh, and I was talking to the players a little bit before the game. They're very confident against Kent State tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the cool thing about that for us, too, is we don't really know what any of the other collegiate teams are looking like year over year right there, there can be such big just with how it is right you're only here for four years so i i believe if i remember correctly i believe kent state finished top four last year might be wrong about that but they were a good team last year but can always change year over year so that's one of the exciting parts about us about this for us is that as the year goes on we kind of get to see all right who's kind of where in the standings and that can change again year to year absolutely uh, I think it speaks a little bit to the, the confidence of, of our team and how they think that they're just good enough to beat whatever whatever Kent has without knowing, just totally blind. Yeah, and I mean, no matter who you're going up against, I think that's... You always wanna, Yeah, you always want to have that confidence. It doesn't matter if you're going up against, you know, EDG, Valorant, like champs yeah. winners. It doesn't matter who you're going up against. If you don't we can beat EDG easily. Yeah, if you don't think that you can win a game, then you're not going to win it. Uh, almost no matter who you're playing. Um, so as we're getting loaded into the game right now, you guys can't see, but we are playing on Ascent for our first map. Pretty popular pick, I think, last year for just teams overall. Um, but yeah, pretty excited to see that as the first map. It's kind of a good baseline to see how things have changed from last season to this season. I will say also, this was the Kent State's map pick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, do you know what our map pick was? Our map pick was Icebox. Not surprising, yeah. Um, honestly, both of those, Ascent, you're going to see a lot more exec heavy yeah. type deal, um, which is going to be a really exciting kind of show of teamwork and kind of playing execs and also playing retakes as a result of that. Um, and then Icebox is a little bit more, you know, aim heavy, kind of rotation heavy, but really excited to see Ascent as the first map this season. Uh, I think that's a good kind of baseline to see who's gotten better at what. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think also it'd be very interesting if we get to the third pick because that one's Haven. Haven, yeah. That one's, I think Haven just as a map, it's kind of a little bit of an oddball, right? It is. I remember from when we played two years ago, Haven was always just kind of a, we'll fit it in if we have time mm -hmm. to scrim it and practice it. But it is just a weird map. Um, and kind of has a lot of map specific strategies that don't really carry over to other maps so excited to see that if we get there that'll be our map three how esc valorant works is we play a best of three series uh so we have one map is kind of like a game in like if you're thinking of like the nba or something uh so we play a best of three um you have to win two maps total to win the series so if we win one kent win one, wins one we'll go to a third map over on Haven. But yeah, loading into it, uh, kind of pretty standard comps. We do have a deadlock cipher out from Kent State. That's interesting. That is very interesting. That's That seems very unconventional. Yeah, no, I mean, the deadlock we've seen from, at least in VCT, it's been a pick that's been somewhat popular. Uh, at least a lot of teams have been trying to experiment with it. Um, Cypher doesn't seem too out of the ordinary. No, Cypher is a very safe pick. Uh, but just having Cypher deadlock, we're going to see a pretty uh, aggressive defense. Or not aggressive yeah. defense, but a very strong defense, I mean, out of Kent State. 
Um, and so it's interesting that they're on the attack now. That's something that OU decided. Kent got to choose the map, but OU got to decide if they attack or defend first. Cersei and Kent State come out on what should be their weaker side to start off the game. Yeah, I think Ascent tends to be a pretty defender-sided map. Yeah, yeah it's defender side and, and just with having deadlock in your team comp. Uh, oh, Pekka already got his bolt destroyed out in B main. Mm -hmm. So they know there's a little presence there. Yep, just some good basic information scouting in early in the round. We do see five Kent players stacked up towards B main. And that's what I mean about this this map being so egg sec heavy. You're not really kind of poking and prodding like you will see on Icebox or Haven. You're kind of just saying, hey, let's decide a site and send it. There's been some uh, Sova util hidden site from... Oh, and Jet dashes in. And each one takes the kill, kill, but gets traded out by literal Chad. Yeah, and that's... Uh, I mean, that's good damage. Swaggy gets a pick in mid. Two, actually. And they definitely know it's a B hit now. Yep, for sure. Out, though, and, but false trades them out. Yeah, this is still winnable. I mean, you have a Sova for info scouting and a Jet to kind of... One more kill on that Jet gets their dash back, so... Always winnable with that deadlock at half HP. Just time to take it slow. Kent playing three stack towards the site. Ohio trying to isolate duels here. That's kind of the name of the game for them right now. They're going to have to push through the smoke, though. False tries to get the kill, but Aki. Aki? Is that his name? Kills them. Aki. I call him Aki. Gets them both to finish the round. Yeah, no, that was just a kind of a triple swing. There, there's no real winning there for OU. It was the kind of had one, to, yeah. you know, if you didn't get that first bullet kill, uh, you're just gonna get swung by three different angles, and that's exactly what happened. Really, I mean, honestly, the hero of that round was Swaggy in, in mid, picking up those two kills. Um, that was big. Really solo walking up that middle section of the map. That kind of absolutely split OU you in half. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what opened it up for them. OU, not a bad defense to start off, but... Pekka's going to throw out the dart again and get it destroyed in main again. It looks like uh, Kent State is yeah. looking at a B hit, but they're playing a little... looking for options here. Yep. We kind of see a 2-1-1 split, or 3-1-1 split, honestly, out of, from Kent State. A lot of pressure towards B, but... Keeping their options open towards that A main area of the map. With the Cypher rotate, it looks like they're probably going to commit here. Eton gets the pick on literal Chad, but Illinox trades him out. And if you're OU, it's a 4v4. Attackers are always going to take that, but in a round like this, you'll take a kill like that. You're really just trying to see if you can get as much economical damage here on the side of OU as possible. This isn't really a round that you're expected to win. Can see on the fast rotate on Cat. Look at False here. These right clicks could be deadly, but decides to show face a little too soon, and that's going to be a free bomb plan for Kent State. Hiccup gets the kill. Hell. Oh, full utility here. Cilantro gets taken down, but that's a Oh, Swaggy and Hacky and Rays get three kills. Swaggy finishes the round. I mean, good attempt from OU, and Raze doesn't have armor anymore. That's two kills and armor taken away from the side of Kent State. You'll take that. As That's pretty good for a You'll for take that as an ego. Honestly, I'm just impressed that we got those two classic kills. Those were really isolated duels, um, and that kind of speaks again to the confidence that OU has going into this. Classic's not a bad weapon, but when you're going, going up against Bulldogs and Stingers, it kind of feels like it, but being able to take those duels like that it's a good sign. Yeah, Ohio definitely seems confident in their ability to take these 1v1s go, and just go. say that our guy's better than your guy. Yeah. We're seeing four players on the side of A main here, and OU fighting for it too. This is really good map control by the side of OU. Not letting Kent State get too deep. They do have the one way up. Yep. That one way is just going to make a little bit of confusion for the side of Kent State as they do decide to creep up here. OU decides to forfeit that map control. They don't want to invest in being able to keep it. Ooh, false soul, Illinox. It's one spotted. Kent State has four here, one lurk coming up B main. This could be huge, not spotted out, Ooh. Eton. This could be disastrous. Oh, Swaggy gets two kills in B market. That's huge. 
And again, that's just opening up the side of the map for Kent. Look, the, yeah, the whole team is rotating. We have all four players, and he could catch out even more here. His position is unknown, and he has... Oh, he gets a third. Eyes down. False trades him out. That's such a find from Swaggy. That's two rounds now, where he's really just kind of opened it up for the side of the golden flashes, and... 30 seconds left. Sight's going to be relinquished. OU doesn't really have the resources to fight for it. Spike planted. Deadlock cage is going to keep them sectioned off. No updraft available for the Dret to get over it. Here. It's kind of a waiting game. Honestly, Maybe. just kind of see if they can get any economical damage out of here. The Deadlock might... No, never mind. No charge. Sight. Oh, Deadlock peaks. False. But gets killed by Cilantro. It's a nice trade. This might be winnable if one more kill is found, oh. but... Unfortunate for Ohio. It was, a, it was a big, big lurk by uh, Swaggy. Yeah, that was... Swaggy's been honestly backbreaking so far in this game. That's two rounds again that he's kind of opened it up for Kent State. You know, finding those two is bad enough already, but being able to get the third on such low HP kind of seals the deal in the round in Ohio, kind of forced to take a limited buy here. Sheriffs and a marshal available to them, but... A lot of light shields. Mm -hmm. Fighting for mid control early on here, they've kind of left B site completely, you know, vacated. Got a lot of KJ utility Ooh. over there. That's what's that caught. He spotted maybe three of them. Yeah, I'm that's not sure how many info. saw. And we're gonna see this as kind of a, a commonality for Kent State. You see four people stacked up near B main, and then that that cipher just kind of staying over towards A. It's keeping the map open for them. If they don't like what they see at B, they can always rotate so towards So the drone is in. Doesn't see anything, but their jet definitely saw false. And she's pushed through. They close the door, they have sight control. Yeah, and just their utility alone. They've been able to take a lot of this B site, but they're backing off now. And look at Swaggy again on your minimap. Completely behind them. This is going to be a multi-kill wow. for Swaggy. That is huge. He gets Ooh, one. Shot Traded them. out though by Pulse. Oh, oh. That's a literal Chad gets a kill on Pulse in left. mid. It's down to a 3v4. Eton gets a kill. Oh. Aki trades out. Paka trades out again to make it that's a 2v2. A two. Yeah, that's a 2v2, and they have a Vandal in spawn, by the way. They can pick that up, and this can be a really Five dangerous plant. route for Kent State now. The plant is down on A, and they're gonna stick together going through Cat, looks like. Just double that plane is safe. Vandals are available to them. Cover going it's on. a smoke off for B main, so that's separating that, that A main player right now, but that is a brutal, pretty brutal smoke for them. Omen blinds in, but gets counter blinded and killed by Illinox, and Raze gets the kill on Packet to finish the round. Yeah. I mean, that was just kind of an unlucky timing there, pushing right as that Omen blind got. It was pretty close for a, for a light buy, though. Yeah, no, I mean, you got it into a, a spot where you were okay with how that round went, but for the game overall, you're not really happy at a 4-0 at a scoreline. Yeah. Would have done a number Definitely to kind of not. bring OU back into the game, and again, that swaggy lurk, that was, wasn't was as He's bad as it, as it should have been. I was looking on the map, no one was looking at him, I think he kind of whiffed, but... Again, it's just those lurks like that, they're played so perfectly where by the time that OU decides to stop looking at something, that's the second he steps out once his team has started to create pressure somewhere else. Kent State seems to be defaulting here, just pushing through and seeing where they can find space. The bomb is looking at B main though. Yeah, and false after that round about two rounds ago, deciding to stay in A main. We saw this before, but it got cleared at that one way, but... Illinox gets a pick on Cilantro in... Where was that? Tree? Yeah, that, was, that was all the way in Tree. Even, even behind Tree. Oh, Swaggy gets a pill on False, but Hiccup trades him out. That was a nice shot, and we see four Kent State players. They're going to be ending this round. I don't think that Ohio knows that this is a B hit. Yeah, I mean, they have the KJ utility. We're seeing Eton pop that already to kind of... 
hold out for a little bit, and Illinox is low. This could be oh, a multi Eton gets a huge Eton. kill. But he gets traded out by Rays. Yeah, and that was really just nice discipline from Kent State. They saw the swing out, they weren't ready for it. They all ducked behind cover and swung him as one again. It's a 2v3 here on the retake. They clear, what is that, lumber? Yeah, and for the side of Kent State, they have a they have a Hunter's Fury available to them. That'll be a, the oh, name of the game for this Packa retake. Packa gets a big entry there on Chad. Oh, Unlucky Packa, timing. Yeah, pulled out the util at the wrong time. Packa, Packa just knows where he's at, though. He's trying to isolate these duels. He kind of knows where he is, but can't really do much about it. He has to get going here. Ooh. Ooh. Nice Packers. kill. Oh, Packers. That was huge. Great Ooh, play. Great shot. play to clutch the round there. That knew exactly what he was doing. Isolated the duels perfectly. And I mean, that's just kind of textbooks how, how you play it. You kind of saw him walk away from, from B main there. He knew he was there. Yeah. Knew that he couldn't do anything about it. Walked towards sight, faked the bomb. Knew who was gonna swing first, and that was just that was more so game sense than than raw aim. He just walked in there with swag. He knew he was gonna win. Yeah, I mean, he knew that, that felt very practiced. That, that that's someone who's been playing, you know, FPS games like this for a while. Where Absolutely. You, you see just the calmness. He wasn't shaky in anything that he did. He knew exactly what he wanted to have happen, and Kent State just gave it to him. Yeah. No sweat on his brow in the player cam there. Yeah. And now oh, OU has three alts available to them. That blade storm has already been popped. Falls trying to replicate he saw a little two bit of the magic. Of them, I think it'd be Link. Yeah, and I mean we have a lockdown and a hunter's fury available to the side of OU. Kent State matching all of those ultimates. Plus an omen. Yeah, plus an omen and a cipher alt. So this might be pretty costly for either team, depending on how much is decided to be invested in this round. Can't looks like they're gonna go for an A hit here. You see three OU players doubled up, or tripled up, excuse me, towards mid. I think they kind of liked how that round went for them, where they just kind of ignored B and decided to fight elsewhere, but Kent State quadruple stack towards A. And this is just a waiting gonna be game. ready for this peak. Absolute winning game for False. That's a good smoke, though, and Ooh, Swaggy gets a kill on Solantro. That was traded out by False. He's trying to go for more. This is a bit dangerous. He only has he one knife and he's, he's slinging through the smoke. That's crazy. Spike planted. And now we see that KJ lockdown, and that's going to be big, but it's going to be broken almost immediately with that Hunter's Fury. Should be broken. There we go. Yep. A blind up on heaven. Falls? Ooh. Oh. False whiffs a little bit. It was a good try. Oh, pickup. Pickup got Illinox. Raze trades out Paka. Yeah, this is a 1v3 right now. How can and Aki finishes it. That was, that was going to be a tough one. Yeah, I mean, that was still a bit of a costly round for the side of Kent State. Uh, they did have to pop two. It was, what, a 2 for 2 ult trade? 2 for 1. Oh, no, 2 for 2. You're right, you're right. Yeah, okay. 2 for 2 ult trade, but, you know, for Kent State, you're obviously still going to take that round win. Nothing but a consolation prize for the side of OU. And I, I just want to see a little bit more proactiveness from the side of OU. They're taking a lot of space early in the round, and they're just kind of giving it up. They are uh, kind of back. as soon as they take it. And that's just kind of say letting OU use their util first, and then responding by taking back that space with theirs. And right as I say that, we see Eton getting a lot more involved here. Notice that supersonic sensor's right there. Knocks it out. Illinox is going to take a little bit of space there. Oh. Should have spotted one. Yeah, should have spotted yeah. one. And we're seeing a lot more proact proactivity from OU. They have two players on this B site. Swaggy's also pushed all the way through mid. Long grenade out. That's three spotted and some util used out from both sides here. Jet's going to dash over. Eton. Through. Oh, Swaggy and literal Chad get two entries there. They yeah. totally have control of sight. Yeah, and what really happened there, Eton was set up in a really nice spot. He didn't get checked or anything, but Swaggy just pushed out of that smoke through Market and just found him immediately. Hiccup gets a kill on Hiccup. Swaggy and Market. That was that was pretty nasty. Yeah, this is very winnable. He has that Null Command available to him. He can block out all of Kent State's abilities Shaggy's here. Literally Shaggy's kill on False up on lane. 
It's found in, I think, OU. Just trying to play more. to keep these Kent State players isolated and try to take away as much weaponry as possible. So Cilantro, Cilantro, a little Chad in on Rays. Makes it a 1v2 for Cilantro. He knows where Aki is. And now he has a good idea where Elinox is. Yeah. Oh, he tried. It was a good try. Yep, just had to resort to the classic. There are only two bu two bullets left in the chamber there, and saw the writing on the wall for that one pretty early on. I thought they might just try to isolate the Kent State players and keep them in. That's a really big uh, risk, planting on B site if you decide to be all entrenched like mm -hmm. they were. Um, if you just hold like kind of near boathouse, you can kind of kill them while they're trying to exit. But <sighs> really, at this point in the half, you just want to get. Rounds on the board if you're OU. Absolutely. Ohio's going to have to save here, though. Yep. Again, full share by. We saw this work out for them pretty well a couple rounds ago, and they have some pretty key ultimates available to them, too. That Hunter's Fury and Null Command is what I'm really looking at. Packet is a late bolt. It gets destroyed. Hiccup has gotten a kill on Swaggy, though, over on A main. And you'll take that as a trade. Low health on false, but... It looks like Kent State is committing to a B hit, though. And no one from Ohio is on B. Pack is getting back at sight. He might spot one here in just a second. This would be a Masters Hunter Fury, but again, with how passive OU's been playing on this B site, there's no way of knowing. He sees the jet dash in on the switch and closes door. Doesn't get the kill, gets smoked out. Mm -hmm. Again, OU playing at a 5v4 advantage in this round. Is it their round to lose? Not really. They don't have the weaponry to. Really Pick have up much knife. Light here. Did not spot any. Was destroyed. It takes a lot of bullets to destroy that deadlock wall. Yeah. I'm seeing one Kent State player in in B main right now. This could be big. Eton gets a kill on Rays, but oh, four of the Ohio players down in an instant, mostly from literal Shad. Pickups in a one v two misses the dart. Still winnable, but it would take some insane shots out of Hiccup. He here. knows where the Sova is. I'm not sure if he knows uh, and Aki finishes out the round. And again, I mean, I feel like a broken record. That was a good eco for OU. It seems like they find a lot of success kind of... That was a great eco. Yeah, being proactive, like, in the beginning of the round. That's how they got it into a 5v4. You know, catching Swaggy off guard, kind of making it so he can't do whatever he wants to do, because that's what it feels like right now. And I, I believe, I can't tell for certain, I think we might be in... Yeah, we're in a one-minute pause right now. This is just a coach's pause. Uh, each team has two, or two of these. I yeah, two, two of these. One of these per half. Uh, so two in a game. So OU electing to take it. Down 7-1 in this game. Not out of it yet. They, they've shown a lot, of, a lot of promise. They just can't kind of execute that on the rounds that matter, which are gun rounds, right? Yeah, I agree that I think they should be playing a little bit more proactively. They really are just pulling back and pulling mm -hmm. back, and it's just it's letting uh, Kent State just take such a, a like a, a foothold on site, yeah. making it so hard to take back. And as a player, it's frustrating because they are playing proactive in the beginning part of the rounds. So I keep saying that, but they're yes. taking B main, A main control. It's just they push Kent State kind of just stays passive and then pushes them right back right after they take that that map control and it's, it's kind of weird to think about but it's expensive to keep map control in the round of valorant right it's expensive to use utility to keep a player in a spot that's proactive um and ou just seems to be getting the short end of the stick on all of these engagements they get into these spots and then they get rewarded they don't get rewarded for it yes yeah well, let's hope they can get a couple more on the board before switching to the harder side. Yeah, and again, what we said at the beginning of the game, this is Kent State's, you know, realistically worst side in terms of their team comp. Hiccup's right playing very proactively here on A main, though. He catches a Cypher. False gets the kill. Yeah, and that was a double swing out of from OU. They, they knew that that was, you know, Kent State was going to try to play that aggressively and take back that space, and they stayed there. Sounded like Lemur had some words of wisdom for them. Yeah, no, I, you're going to see stuff like that in, in Valorant a lot, where you're going to see a lot of stylistic changes right after pause like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there was something about, hey, let's fight in A main and let's actually stay there and fight. Shoot more guns, win more rounds. Yeah, no, really. <clears throat> Looks and like... Now this is, yep, 4v5 in favor of OU. And, again, they're kind of playing... taking mid-control. 
Yeah, and OU, if you're OU, you're okay with that. You have a setup on B to delay for at least a little bit, and you also have that turret in pizza in mid to kind of spot for Kent State walking up mid. So you don't have to play too, you know, aggressively here, but you do have to be in a spot to defend B site if it gets taken. A lot of util being thrown on B site, and Kent State's pushing on, taking site right now. Pack is trying not. to slow it down a little bit here in CT. Yeah, and I'd love to see a hundred sphere out of Pack it here. See that oh, there he goes. Here. Ooh, Deadlock gets Hiccup, but there's, he's saved. Look how Chad kills Eton. I'm not sure where that was. Yeah, Market, that was maybe. into Market, and Falls kind of taking a swing here. That's the null command popped for OU. Oh, oh and he catches Aki through the wall. Literal Chad gets two. Cilantro should have one. Caught Literal Chad. Falls got raised. There's only one left in back, Boathouse. He gets kill on Falls. Right the 1v1. Oh. Clutch. And he clutches the round. That yeah, was a close good. one. That was a, that was a good round by Kent there to finish that. Yeah, that was a nice round out of honestly out of both teams. Yes. Some of that proactivity in the beginning of the round, but that was just a little bit again <laughs> kind of backbreaking for OU near the end end half of that round. Literal Chad finds a pick in mid before the rest of the team was really ready to execute on that. And because it didn't get traded, that's how you find cilantro in that one v one scenario. We're gonna see another save round from OU. Yeah, and they're just kind of setting themselves up to be able to buy for the next two rounds, regardless, regardless of how this round goes. So, after this, Constellation Prize look forward to at least Kinsta two more Kinsta is pushing rounds. hard through B main. They definitely saw that there is at least one on site. <laughs> Ooh, Illinox gets the kill on Paka and Little Chad gets the kill on Eton, making it a 5v3. But False is going to pop his ultimate here. Bladestorm's active. He gets killed by Swaggy in mid. Swaggy knows where they are. Oof. Gets the kill on Cilantro. Make it a 5v1. And he knows where Hiccup was. Illinox gets the kill, finishes out the round flawless. Yeah, no, I mean, at that point, that's like the third time that Swaggy's gotten to that spot. And... Even then, we, we had pop blade storms in that round. We weren't in a really great position, but an ult invested. I'm not and sure if False didn't know that he was there, or... Yeah, no, he didn't. And yeah. that's just the thing where, on the side of OU, aside from that KJ, it really depends on where you decide to use that KJ utility. You have a turret and an alarm bot to kind of, you know, get map information without being there. And OU just stylistically is elected to use most of that utility on Bulls the has an aggressive operator on B site here. He gets caught by the oh. dart though. Uh, Pack is killed by Illinox with Bladestorm. Eton sprang through the smoke. False, False gets the kill on Little Chad. That's pretty big. He gets traded out by Illinox though. Yeah, and that was the first time we'd seen an operator out from False all game and finds one, but. He tried to get a aggressive in the main, but Hiccup gets a kill on Swaggy and B main. Yeah, Hiccup makes it 3v3. It's a 3v3, and this Jet's in a really advanced position. If Hiccup finds Ooh. it, Ooh, Alanox got two. That was crazy. He flicked back for Eton. Cilantro trades him out, though. Stops the ace. Yeah, ace denied, but if you're OU, you're really looking for your second round of the half here. Ooh, Ray's had the op back in Boathouse. That's tough. Yeah, and again, if you're if you're false, you, you got Last what you were looking for. You, you got a pick with your operator, but you got forced off that angle so fast. He didn't get a pick into B main. He got a pick from the back of Boathouse. And really, mm -hmm. if you have an op back there, it's kind of like a one and done type yes. situation. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get cleared out extremely quickly. No, he was definitely hoping to get that pick in B main to at least get two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was a nice effort from Cilantro, but just taken down pretty pretty swiftly after that. No, you fighting to get their second, try to keep this game somewhat in their grasp heading into the second half. They're sitting on a four spy. A lot of guardians, it looked like. Mm -hmm. A lot of action in mid. Oh, Hiccup, Hiccup. gets a kill on Illinox through the smoke. Yeah, and that's just the type of, you know, pick-me-up kill that you're looking for if you're OU. And he gets one on Swaggy. This is the best spot OU's found themselves in around all all game. Absolutely. It's a 5v3, and now it's kind of up to Kent. They have the onus of, of kind of bringing it to OU here, where it seems like OU's been on the back foot for most of this game. They don't have the jet anymore to dash into sight either. 
Yeah, and this will be kind of slow execution out from Kent State, wherever they decide to end up. Looks they like they're going to go through Cat. Is Cilantro here with his ult available? Could decide to use it for info. Oh, he gets one, though. I think Full I saves him. Caught out here. If you're Hiccup, you're counting your lucky stars after that. That should have been a kill, but... Every single player is on A site right now. Falls gets a kill on literal chat and Aki. Yeah. And the round is finished out four to nothing. Yeah, that was just, he only lost one. Yeah, that was just... It kind of felt like, oh, you found where Kent State was and was able to fight there in mid, and they took the fight to them. I mean, that was, that was really good team play out of... I can hear Lemur back there. He's happy. Yeah, He's no, he gets yeah, he gets pretty animated during these games. And uh, just for anyone at home that doesn't know, uh, we're gonna switch to the second half of the game. So OU is gonna take uh, the defensive or the offensive side. Excuse me, Kent State will go to the defense. We'll start off with another pistol round. All economies, alt charge, everything will be reset, uh, except for the scoreline. Uh, um, first, first to thirteen wins, by the way. Just so we're all aware. Oh yeah, they're getting right into it. Yeah, they just get right. That was gonna be a little it. bit longer. Mm -mm. Here. And again, can say with that cipher Here. deadlock, it's really strong on the defensive side. Um, we're seeing really forceful. Wow, Illinox is aggressive, getting four before he's traded out. That was that was the blink of an eye. That round ended ended like that. Yeah, that was insane. I mean, you saw what Kent State wanted to do. They wanted to fight in mid, but Illinox just kind of taking over the game you saw him there he's just kind of playing an aim lab really yeah. he said he said i'm gonna pick jet i'm gonna buy the sheriff and i'm gonna hit the w key yeah he might as well not even tap the movement key he, he pretty much just pressed dash got to his spot and just started clicking left mouse button that was impressive I was that impressed. was that was impressive that was lightning fast did it uh did we just take our timeout? yeah okay so we get we get two every game um one every half so this is our first of the half again it's first to 13. so if you're oh you kind of have to put something on the table here uh most of the times you'll see teams if they lose their pistol round save the second round of the half probably not going to see that there um just because it's so close to being game over already for ou they kind of yeah, want to they have to start force. yeah they have to force by here so expect some stingers, some sheriffs out from OU. Yeah. Similar weaponry for Kent State. It's not the worst in the world if OU loses this map, though, because this was Kent State's pick. They were yeah. going into this very confident on this map. Yeah, this was Kent State's pick, and at least speaking personally from two years ago, we didn't really play Ascent too often. Um, so probably just a map that we kind of got caught out on. It's early in the Season 2. Uh, what you'll notice, especially early on, is teams will have very, very, very limited map pools. Um, just because of how long it takes to scrim and practice individual maps. That makes sense. See teams kind of focus in, all right, let's get two or three good out of the seven possibles that are being picked here. I mean, all your players are busy college students. Yeah, I know that too, yeah. Looks like they're getting a lot of info through Cat here, but there is a deadlock wall up. They get blinded and pushed by Rays, who gets false. Pack of trades out and gets Illinox. Little Chad gets Cilantro. They cotted, uh, or they saw a um, Cypher in mid. Little Chad gets the kill on Hiccup, though. Hiccup was 1 HP, so it's a 2v3. Yeah, you're kind of expecting that to happen eventually. Ooh, Swaggy! With a nice peek. Pac was not ready for that. Eton gets a beautiful right click on a Aki there. He's got a Sheriff available. He cuts his shot. Oh, and he knows where Swaggy is. He's pulling out a little bit. Throwing down the Swarm Grenade. Doesn't quite get him with it. Playing Ring Around the Rosie. Yeah, a little bit, huh? Swaggy finishes the round, though. Yeah, that just kind of broke down in the... Match point. It, 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 was, it was just really sloppy fighting out, honestly, from both teams. Not sloppy isn't bad, but it's chaotic, I guess, is a better way to describe it. Which is how a lot of those forces go, right? When you're, you're forcing into another eco force uh you don't have the most sophisticated guns right you have sheriffs you have singers and it kind of gets messy like that we saw that there 
Gotta get down and dirty in the mud. Yeah. Now we're seeing another buy. Again, 13 to secure the map for Kent State. They're going oh, very quick here on B main. They did leave a marshal in top mid. Swaggy gets the kill on false on site. Uh, and he gets another on Paka. Eton trades him out. Raze gets the kill on Hiccup. I don't know where that was. You see Cilantro down in mid and... Raze gets another. It's just Cilantro left with his marshal. Yeah, left with a Herculean task in this 4v1 with the marshal. But he's a monster with it. Escapes the shock dart, almost gets the hit on Aki, but Aki finishes the game. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that just looked like clean and calculated out from Kent State there. Yes, definitely. Kind of, they, they were comfortable with that map, certainly. Yeah, I don't think the scoreline 13-2, I don't think it shows the entire game, though. I think, like, oh, it wasn't just like a complete steamroll. Oh, you had some pretty good ideas. It just felt like Kent had a better understanding of how the round was going to shake out each time. Um, you know, they knew when to get aggressive. They knew when OU's aggressiveness was and wasn't a threat. Um, and we saw that a lot when they would take, you know, A main, B main control and then immediately fall back. And Kent State would immediately just run right back in. Their reads, yeah, their reads were, yeah. were pretty good. They were pretty on point. Yeah. Um, this is also a good time, I think, to uh, call back to our, our, our partner of Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Uh, and our sponsor of OUCU Financial. Yep, Red Bull's just giving us free Red Bull to drink. I mean, it's really nice. You know, I'll come in here after classes, um, just kind of pick one up. But yeah, shout out to OUCU, especially doing a lot for the club, making it really exciting year for us. But we're gonna be cutting to a five minute break. We'll catch you with Icebox and the second map of OU Valor. Yeah.
Hey guys, welcome back to Bobcat Valorant. We're here for map two uh, on your screen right now. We got Icebox loading in. Um, and yeah, we're just ready to go getting ready and going into this map two. Yeah, uh, this is uh, OU's pick. So they're gonna feel a little bit more confident on this one. Um, they already locked in all their agents and uh, Kinstate's still thinking about it. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I all I'm really hoping out from OU is a more kind of streamlined strategy and idea of how to play the map. Um, again, early in the season, you're going to see a lot of teams kind of like that. You might be expecting a lot of close series that don't have close maps. Um, and I'm kind of curious to see if that kind of happens here. Um, that would be know, interesting, yeah. Yeah, last map was really dominant from Kent State. The map was dominant. The individual skill gap between the players, it wasn't as bad as the scoreline would have indicated. Uh, Absolutely. 13-2 kind of, to me, feels like just a complete stomp. It didn't really feel like that. There were a lot of, you know, one, two player alive type of rounds for Kent State. And especially those Ecos, that's what I'm looking at. If OU can kind of bring what they brought on their eco rounds to those gun rounds where it matters more and they have a better chance of winning outright. Definitely, I think a big advantage that Kent State had there in the last match was they were great with momentum, you know? They had the economy the whole game. They never yeah. had to really scrap by. Yeah, and that all starts with a pistol round. OU wasn't able to convert a single pistol round last map. And not that not winning your pistol rounds is you know, map losing or map defining, but it does set the tempo and also has really big economical impacts. Winning one pistol round kind of guarantees you two rounds in the half. It's the only round in Valorant where that really happens, where if you win one round, you're kind of guaranteed to win the next. Yes, yeah. What do you think of these comps here? OU playing the absolute standard uh, <laughs> Icebox comp. Kent pulling out uh, the harbor there, which isn't super, like, um, abnormal. Definitely not the meta here on Icebox, but... Hiccup, oh, Hiccup gets the entry on Aki, but is traded out by Illinox. Yeah, and that's a good start. Normally, you're going to favor one-to-one -one trades like that more if you're on the defense. So, technically, you know, kind of not in the favor of you, but... Just getting kills on the board and making it into these later round scenarios, which you never felt like they really were able to get into last last map. Viper, the enemy Viper, the Kent State Viper, has pushed up almost all the way through B main here. Yeah, and again, we're seeing kind of that Viper take on the role that that Cypher took on last map, where they're going to be... Ooh, ooh. Oh, it is Swaggy again. Yeah, Swaggy gets the kill on Solantra to open up B site. Eton is there and sees him, but it looks like Kent State is forcing onto A without the spike. Yeah, and you're going to see that a lot, and hopefully OU kind of wisens up to that. The, the more they see that Viper... Also might catch Swaggy here. He misses. Yeah, just not doesn't have the weaponry available for that. The classic, not really good at catching enemies out like that, but... Hopefully OU... This Illnox gets a kill on Paka in mid. And Swaggy is planting on a site now that they have control. Fulz gets the kill on Illinox. Heals himself. Yeah, and it's a, a 2v3. Ooh, ooh, Swaggy is right there to get false, But it's traded out by Eton. Make it a 1v2. It's fully winnable for him. Can't say doubled up back near Nest. So the second they see a, a tap on the spike, they're going to swing that together. Ooh, he catches. He sees both, but is killed by little Chad. And that was a little farther back. That wasn't even Ness. They were just doubled up on that angle, high low, right set up right there from Kent State. But just for you know, not even talking about that round, but just for the the future of this map for OU, I think we need to kind of wisen up to seeing that Viper, kind of just as a like a, a red herring that hey, Kent State's not ending over here. That's gonna be their lurker, and almost every time. That round included, and from last map, the site that Swaggy is on is not the, the site the wrong that Kent State ends yeah. at. Pickup has taken a lot of space here on A, but it looks like Kent State is funneling through for B right now. And Solantros is kind of in a one and done position here. All he can really hope is for Ooh. one and... He's playing this he catches nicely one, oh, but doesn't get the kill. Aki gets him. And Illinox kills false. He was way back in CT. Yeah, and that was pretty good damage out from Cilantro, but... Swaggy's the kill on Eton. It's a 2v5. Yeah, a lot of the damage there was just through the Viper decay, so Kent State looking pretty healthy, and... Are you going to try to find anything to salvage out of this round? Viper is definitely sort of a monster, I think, on this map. 
Ooh. He hits the target. He knows where Swaggy is. Forces him to pull back a little bit. Gets caught by the recon. They're getting a crossfire. Literal chat. Oh, Illinox gets a kill on Paka, but Hiccup gets a little chat. He hears the uh, zip line and gets the kill on Swaggy. Aki gets Hiccup though. That was a that was a pretty nasty shot though. You know, and that was pretty okay damage out there uh, from OU. Again, you're not looking to win that round there. They didn't invest anything into it, so kind of looking forward to now this round. This is their rifle round. They weren't able to convert this round last half, and that's I think what really started the snowball into that 13-2 scoreline. Yes, um, definitely. So if you're OU looking at all costs to secure this round. They're up against two sheriffs, two bulldogs, and a guardian. So. Yeah, and that's not that's not the best buy out of Kent State either. Um, I, I I really don't know how the economics work particularly, but you've seen a lot of professional teams be able to pretty much full buy uh, on their bonus rounds. Uh, but Kent State not in that scenario here. So OU. Oh, you oh Cilantro saw Illinox on uh, yellow, but doesn't get his gun out in time. Eton's gonna swarm grenade sight. Here's the plant. Shooting through the smoke, but not the right spot. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of util going out. False gets a kill on Illinox, though, from CT. Yeah, that was a nice little shot out from False, and has the healing available to him, so... That's a pretty big sage wall, though. False. That's isolating. That is huge. Oh, but the Swaggy's behind. False catches him. Hiccup gets two! The defuse is off right now. 3v2 and the spike is half. It's a 1v1. That's going to stick it. You. And he wins because of the sage wall. And he gets the kill after the rounds. Yeah, that's the first time OU's been able to convert, you know, a, a nice solid gun round. That was just solid team fighting out of OU and the kill on the end, two out of Paka. So. Hiccup really the hero in that round with that collateral kill and false's sage wall. That's what really false's sage them. wall was a big, big, big there. Yeah, that isolated pretty much three players from Kent State and forced, um, I believe that was Swaggy to kind of swing earlier than he wanted to. Yeah, definitely he was able to catch Swaggy in the back too. That was that was pretty big. Swaggy could have gotten a lot of value. Yeah. They see the uh, what is that called? High tide? Is that the uh, wall pushing through on a? think so. <laughs> Something like that. And Hiccup's in a pretty nice spot here. He's gotten here unspotted. He oh, he gets kill Illinox. He He's out. Nice oh. entry, but doesn't get out. Little Chad gets him. Pack of trades, though. Make it a 4v3. Yeah, and that's okay. That was a really good trade out from OU. Hiccup kind of gave up his life for that, but you'll take that. Two for one trade. Take pretty minimal big damage start. On, yeah, minimal damage on Pack. Pretty sizable damage, though. On, I believe that's Eton on the KJ for the side of OU. He sees nothing in A main. It looks like they're going to slowly rotate out through mid a little bit here. And we're seeing Kent State kind of work up towards that tube, tube area here. And this kind of gives them a lot of freedom in the map. They can end B, they can end A. It's kind of a choose your own adventure. Ooh, False and Swaggy up. are on other sides of this wall. They don't quite know they're there. That's big. But False gets the kill. Make it a 4v2. Yeah, just a little more patient. That was perfect. Swaggy swung into him. All he had to do was press left mouse button there. Kent State's going to go for A here from mid. It's a big fight. Let's see if Pac sees. Someone did. False saw. Got Aki making a 1v4. Raze is going to stick the plant. Gets it down. Hey, you need to go slow from OU here. You don't want to do anything... False knows where he is. Just and Pack gets the kill. Him. Finish the round. It's a lot more like it out from OU. That was just clean. That was good team play. Hiccup starting the round off strong for OU for that two for one, right? He only got one. Pack was able to trade pretty much finding value off of Hiccup's sacrifice there. And they were just able to play it smartly, right? They yeah, that was up. a great entry. Yep, False got a nice pick here on a Swaggy. He was really patient here. He let Swaggy swing it to him. And then from there, I mean, they just stayed pretty much tripled up. Knew how they wanted to play the round. Raze never really stood a chance there. Probably was getting shot out from four different angles. And OU, for the first time, finding Kent State on an eco. Get out of my way. Oh, Jet's going to pop Bladestorm. 
Yeah, and so that Blade Storm, that makes us still very dangerous for OU, and the Golden Flash is not trying to rel relinquish this round in any way. Kent State's totally committed to A, it looks like, and Ohio's backed off of sight a bit. Yeah, this might turn into a really big egg sec for Kent State. They have that Viper Pit and um, uh, Rolling Tide. Oh, and they're popping the Viper Pit right now. Yeah, and we're really going to be looking at Pack's utilities here to kind of clear out this Viper Spit, but that is a Null Command out from OU. Forcing Kent State off the site, and this, this spike's been down for a pretty decent amount of time already, too. Keep that in mind if you're an OU player. Everyone on OU is pushing into the Viper Pit right now. Everyone is in this one spot. And bullets one are flying. Hiccup gets one. Falls two. gets one. Falls gets another. Hiccup gets another, making a 5 wow. one And Falls finishes the round with a flawless. Wow. And that was two really, really, really powerful alts invested from the side of the Golden Flashes. That was Viper Pit, and that was Jet Knives. Yes, that was big. On a save round, is uh, that's a bold move from Kent State. You know, I mean, honestly, I don't even really disagree with the, the idea out of Kent State, right? Yes, yeah. To use you show where you make up for your guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was just pretty expertly played from OU, right? They they didn't take it. They didn't just dive headfirst. I mentioned that Spike was kind of getting down there. It wasn't too low yeah it was only like 10 or 15 seconds but you know they kind of kept their cool kept their composure knew how much time they had to play with and played with it perfectly calm cool and collected yeah and again this is OU's defense side this is the side that we saw them start out last map and they're just looking a lot more comfortable here they know where they know where they want to fight and how they want to fight for stuff Harbor made it look like they might go for an A push, but they haven't seen anything yet. And Cilantro is going to be tested here. This is pretty much for Kent State players. Illinox peeks out, gets Cilantro. His crosshair is not in the right spot. Yeah, he's holding for yellow box, but just swung at a different angle unexpectedly. The plan is down, and we have a full rotate from Ohio. Through all entirely through CT, it looks like. This spot out from Swaggy. Eton might get caught oh, out. Swaggy gets a... Two big kills there. He's making it a 2v5. False is just going to try to jiggle peek. Packa gets a kill on Swaggy. And they're going to res this. This is a 3 Cilantro does Ozu. get rezzed. It's still very much winnable here. Packa finds another, though. That Sage Wall is up, and Packa looking for a lot more in this round. Packa finds Packa gets another. Three in the round? 2v2, they don't have time. Yeah, but all those Kent State players are going to die to the spike here. So, I mean, costly for both. Oh, you're not able to get Definitely. around on the board, but... Oh, look at that buy. Yeah, no, we're going to be able to buy this round, and this is kind of Kent State on the ropes economically. This is a really big swing round in the half, right? If OU loses, it's not the end of the world. They can buy for next, but if they're able to convert this and Kent State isn't, Kent State could be able to buy next round. False is going to be watching B main with an operator this round. Yeah, and you see that. And you see that operator on that uh, sage, which you know might look a little odd, but without a duelist in this comp, it is pretty typical. And hiccup spotted Ooh, out. Hiccup kind of new. He's forced out, but he survives. He's lucky to get out with his life. Can't say knew that happened a couple rounds prior and cleared it out. The killjoy is down. It clears of sight. And Packa has his Hunter's Fury if he decides to use it here to break that KJ lockdown, but... Oh, the op spot one, but he just barely misses a pixel he off. He, he tagged him. Did he? Oh, yeah, he did, Swaggy, you're right. Said, Shot him through the wall. Yeah, 50 HP now, and... This might be a Hunter's Fury. Fury. Two? Sees two! Gets a kill on that key. Yeah, that's another player tagged up. That's 70 damage. That was a really big Hunter's Fury out of from Packa there. Spotted again, but OU just deciding to flood the site, and right now this is a 5v3 for OU. Hiccup. Ooh, Hiccup got a nice kill there, and Packa got one on Illinox. I didn't see that one. It's a 5v2 for Ohio. Swaggy gets the kill on Eton and Packa. Made a 3v1 now with false trading out. And he's gonna wash up with the op. He tags him, legs him, and gets the kill with the classic. So long to defuses. Ohio wins the round. That was a lot of value found out from False there in that round. That was two tags. Finished off the kill on Swaggy. I think he tagged it twice. Yeah. Now that I think about it, but 
Yeah, no, that could have gotten really dangerous. I believe Swaggy had enough to pop his Viper's Pit. I think that's what you saw late in that round. Ah, uh, maybe not, but... And watch this. He pushes through the Viper's Pit with the op, doesn't even care, and just... Yeah. Look at that. Not on the Swaggy, but yeah, that's a, that's a lot of value out from False. Only two kills in the round, but really didn't feel like that. And, you know, given the haircut to Swaggy, that's what secured the round. That was getting scary there. That was yes. a 4v2 right into a 2v2 for a, for a moment. But... Yeah, and I think if you're OU, kind of going to the rest of this game and for the rest of the series, you kind of want to focus on, you know, kind of cooling off Swaggy. He's been he's been shooting. Yes, certainly. He's been. Shooting. I think uh, definitely literal Chad was was shooting a lot last game at the beginning of this one. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done so much recently though. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, no, and I believe that's a that's a timeout called from Kent State. They didn't use a single one on that first map. Only OU. Um, so kind of nice to see, right? It's an advantage for Kent State, right? They're calling a timeout. But if you're OU, it's nice to know that you kind of got them second guessing, needing, you know, external assistance. They're not just kind of running the fit anymore. Absolutely. What is the score? I can't quite see it. 4-3 uh, to the side of OU. And again, okay. Kent State's going to so be pretty on... close. Yeah, very close still. But Kent State going to be on an eco round here. So this could be, again, a turning point in the match. And Kent State's kind of on the ropes here. OU, if they win this round, they're going to have a snowball. Balls caught, Swaggy. Saw one in mid, but didn't get him. Oh, he legged him, though. Oh, he did. Swaggy again on pretty much one HP. And Kent State does not have a Sage to heal that damage up, so he's going to be permanently wounded for the rest Ball of the round. Also, another on B. Oh. Sees him again. Doesn't quite get him. He dashes out. Yeah, this is a lot of util being used from Kent State, but they're not really have to like find an opening to get that spike planted. The one thing I am very worried about though, is Swaggy, Swaggy has a on that A site. Depending on how he decides to play around this, it looks like Paka aware though. Mm. If he pushes out here and tries to get a little bit too greedy, this should just be a free kill for Paka. Oh, I think Paka's about to see him. Yep. yep, day in the shooting range, getting that headshot. There's that kill, up. but Kent State still takes A site and it's uh, emptiness. Yeah, no, and that's okay. If you're OU, you kind of played around that, right? Pretty obviously, Paka stations outside of the site. So you're fine with just having this be a 5v4 retake, especially if you're going into worse weaponry. Ohio's waiting for their team. All get there. Ready for the push. They flash through. Swarm grenade dropped by Kent. Oh, Illinox. Illinox got two whoa, with the classic. Whoa. And Raze gets a third. False gets a kill on literal Chad. Paka, Paka gets a kill on one. Illinox, even in and out to a 2v2. Raze gets a kill on Paka, but the Sage Wall is up. He needs to get this half He's going to try to... Oh! oh no oh, scope from False on the bomb, and he's he skips the bomb, and he gets it! Clutch from False. I have never seen anything like that. That was incredible. That was incredible. Oh my god. Yeah, he needed to get it half tier. If he didn't get half tier, he's, he's dead. He hears him drop, pulls out the op, flick. Well, not really a flick, but that was impressive. Wow. Wow. I liked that. That was fun to watch. That was fun to watch. What a round and what a play out of false there. I mean, he didn't need this no scoping. He was already at like 20 HP, but he could have knifed him if he yeah, wanted. Yeah, extra style points. And if you're if you're raised, you're going to be thinking that about that for a little bit. <laughs> And Kent State here on a, on a gun round. So this is really big round for OU to convert again here. And we're seeing false. I love it. He's getting to such aggressive Ooh, position. Ooh, is out, though. Forcing them back a little bit. Yeah, and if you're Kent State looking for an answer to an operator, I don't think there's really much better than a, than a Harbor ult in this game. Raze gets an entry on Eton. Swaggy gets a kill on Hiccup in mid. And then he rotates back to the rest of his team. Poison's off. And it's just very disciplined out from Kent State, right? They get their picks and they don't they're gonna stay on the B site, but they didn't have so to launch. Cilantro, here's to the it. plant. And Viper Pit is down. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough three v five. And that's on the side of Kent State, and if you're OU, you kinda have to start making a difficult decision on how you want to play this round out. Is also just really gonna cool. blind fire in. Cilantro oh gets killed by literal Chad. Illinox gets killed by or kills Paka. False gets one, but is killed by literal Chad to finish the round. 
you know, and that was just a couple, you know, early picks off for Kent State, and it's really extremely difficult to play in a 5v3 when they're playing as disciplined as they are like that. Especially if they're in a Viper's pit. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. But for the side of OU, right, you got three more rounds left in the half. Um, Kent State, they have enough money to buy for probably the rest of the game, or probably the rest of the half here. Um, so if you're OU, you really want to win this round. If you lose this round, you're not going to be able to buy next round. We are going to see an attack side off on A. And False playing really aggressive. He does. Oh, oh he gets a pick on Raze. Sees the spike. If False is feeling it. He has the res. He, he played really aggressive there, given such a powerful ultimate. But he gets the pick, falls right back, and kind of mirroring what Kent State did last round. Right? They got their pick, they fell back, and didn't try to do anything too crazy with it. OU playing really disciplined here. Solandro, he's able to stay here. That didn't get that. The didn't drone did not see him. Yeah. Yeah, he could have decided to play up here, but I play a little more passive of a position. Ooh, Swaggy's pushing up through tube right now. Solandro gets the kill on Illinox. Yeah, that's three v five. That's his first kill of the game. Eton saw Swaggy. Swaggy gets the kill on Eton though. Pushes back down through tube. False knows where he is. False is gonna False, swing it and gets the kill shot. through the wall. Heals himself. That's a really massive shot out from False there, and that's a really big fight win for OU. Remaining two players on the side of Kent State looking like they're going to decide to end up at A. Probably a smart decision, but they are running into a lot of KJ utility that won't be able to be used. Eton is dead in the round. OU still going to have to watch out for that op, which is on site. False here's the plant. Slow orbs it. It's a nice slow, but not really going to find anything, and just yeah, barely missed him. The Viper wall covered that. Look at little Chad swinging out window here. That's a... Op shot's going to go astray. Saw Chad. Falls lucky with his life here. Hiccup pushing... Op misses again. It's a nice spot from Hiccup. And Pac is just going to stick it. Go down. Yeah. Yeah. He just wins. Wow. Falls with three in the round Let's... again. Did they... No. They got the operator. They killed the guy with the operator after the round. Yeah, and that's, that's, again, that's really big. We're going to see that Econ become a really big part of this round. And what a shot from False. Complete trust in his teammates to hold that other angle with him. And he was really, he's just been the, the story of the game. Absolutely. OU. I mean, he's just, he's playing hot. He's playing confident. He knows that he's, he's, his aim is on point today. Yeah, no, and he's just playing it smartly too. I mean, and again, here, here we go. We see Kent State. They're buying this round. They're going to buy next round no matter what. It's the last round of the half. But... It's not going to be really that pretty. And we're going to see five Kent Plate players stacked over towards the B site. That's a Viper's Pit committed on A. No one from Ohio on B. Yeah, they really wanted to fight aggressively for A there. Normally, you're going to see a Viper's Pit committed just with one Viper on a site. But that's leaving, you know, the really big issue with the that. is already down. False gets a kill on Swaggy, though. Make it a 4v5. Illnox gets a kill in Kitchen on Eton with Bladestorm. Yeah, that's really reservable. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw False kind of rotate over there to get that res off. He has the ultimate available to him, but... Doesn't look like, like he's just... going to. Yeah, he just wants to play aggressively here. That's a Ooh. KJ lockdown use, and... Hunter's Fury out from Ohio. Didn't catch any? Yeah, but it, it did catch the KJ lockdown. That's all you were oh, looking for. I see, here. I see. That makes sense. Raze gets two, pack and trades him out. It's a 2v2. They're gonna use Hunter's Fury on the bomb and win the round with it. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea from OU trying to play as fast as they did. I'm not sure if I agree with not using that Resurrect there. It would have been like a 10 second rotation. Um, that could have been, you know, the difference in the round there, but. I mean, hey, if you're 18 and 5, yeah. 18 and 6, you know, you're shooting, so... I think part of it is also Duelist Brain, where, you know, <laughs> he knows yeah. that he, he, he tends to play a little bit more aggressively, so... Yeah, for sure, for sure. He wants to take that space. Now, we're seeing the last round of the half here for OU. Could be going into it with a two-round advantage or dead even here. And False again False. in this position. He's tucked in. This is kind of a... I really like this out of him. But the Aldrone's going to clear him out. He's going to have to fall off that angle pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, but he gets killed. And Raze gets... Or Swaggy gets killed on Eton. Oh, and Illinox gets the kill on Cilantro. Yeah, tracking was, just a little bit off the mark there. 
Oh, that is just a little bit, a little bit painful. Hiccup did get the kill on Swaggy though, so he gets a real gun. This is his last round, so let's see if he can be the hero. He tries, but little Chad gets it. It was a one v four. Yeah, no, I mean, much, much, much improved half out from OU. They felt just a lot more comfortable in this map, and it's kind of just time to see, hey, can you convert that on your attacking side? Which I'm not too worried about, honestly. They, they've been good about taking aggressive fights. They just couldn't find those fights on Ascent. But now being on the attack, right, it's kind of, you know, Kent State has to meet them eventually. And I think you didn't see them be that successful in the attack ascent, but if you're going into the half at 210, it's kind of hard to, you know, just that mental yeah, hole definitely. that they're in. But a 6 6 game, this is literally anyone's game. Absolutely. And really aggressive out from Swaggy here. He's just slow walking up with his knife out. Oh, he's behind the, uh, the harbor wall, though. And he gets one on Paka. And he gets Swaggy. another on Hickey. Cilantro trades Ooh. him out, though, and gets the kill on literal Chad, so now it's even. And that's all you really needed. Should have the heal available, I think, for Cilantro, and he does. Yeah. He's just keeping it out of greed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for you. Looks like they're going to rotate back towards A. Yeah, man, Eton has a really big jump on this here. There's no one on the side of A for, for OU. It just kind of depends on how aggressive Eton gets Did that himself. Killjoy see them? I think he did. Yeah, I think they did, but OU's going to OU's gonna beat Kent State out here. That's a Nano Swarm out, and that kind of just, to me at least, should tell OU, hey, we're oh, not on the side Oh, gets the kill on Aki, though. That's big. That's his third in the round here. Ray's gets a Swarm Grenade kill on Eton. 2v2. Yeah, and just for the spot that Eton was in, there really wasn't anywhere for him to go. I'm looking at this jet flank, though, out from Kent State, and this could be huge. Cilantro is ready for it, looks like. Mm -hmm. He gets swung out. This really matters oh, here. Cilantro. He was. He got it. That's four for Cilantro. That's and oh, oh, almost an ace. False took it. But that was a good round. No, I think he dinked him. I think he dinked him. It looks like he dinked him to me. I saw that blood splatter and I was like, wow, that's our first ace of the season in the first game out of Cilantro. And I wasn't going to say it while it was happening, but he and Eton, they haven't been able to get activated this map really at all. Um, and that's a big, big, big confidence booster if you're Cilantro, right? He's a great player. Yeah, that was a dink out of Yeah, him. yeah, you see the assist. Yeah. He, he He's a great player. And just being able to get him a 4K like that, it's getting him active. It's getting him involved in OU now. In a prime position to take a two-round lead. This is again their bonus round here, or not their bonus round, but their equal. Illinox gets an entry on Hiccup though. That was very well, aggressive. Packa gets the trade on Swaggy. Not really this is trade. extremely ex aggressive out of Kent State here. They're pushed all the way up through A man. Raze is just hiding behind this corner with a classic. Yeah, but that's a lot of damage done to a couple Kent State players, right? That jet, very low HP. Harbor, a little worse for wear, and again. Oh, False gets the kill with the Outlaw and Rays, and everyone's rotated over towards B. Yeah, no, and this Marshall here, er, Outlaw? Outlaw, outlaw. Yeah. This Outlaw is going to be absolutely brutal, right? That just one-shots players with light armor. Illinox gets a kill through the wall on Eton there. And False not going to be able to catch these players as they're rotating here. Illinox he gets another on False down at yellow. And now he has a Marshall here. Cilantro has to play this a little... Cilantro so catches him through the water and gets literal Chad too. Three. And three with Aki. Cool, calm, and collected. I mean, what a timing on the swing to swing through that harbor wall. Just caught uh, Ilonix off guard. That was really nice for yes. Cilantro. Yes, Cilantro's feeling good now too. Seven kills in two rounds. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a big, big, big confidence booster. Much, much less. This is kind of something that we don't really see happen a lot at the collegiate level, but I want you to pay attention to Cilantro's alt charge. He's going to have a Viper's Pit on the third round of the half. Oh, yeah, Which you're right. I, I cannot understate how big that is to have an ultimate that important this early in the game. He just needs one alt orb or one kill or one plant, and that ultimate's available to him. OU should be playing around that this round. If, it's if they very can, slow around here. Yeah, if they can just get the spike down, that's massive for them. 
you don't often are given the luxury of having an ultimate like that. And I want to see literal Chad get taken down pretty systematically here. He's kind of out in the open. But OU, you're just going to fall off that angle there. And they're pulling back off of B. It looks like uh, Eton has pushed all the way through A, but he sees the Sova. Yeah, no, a he's, bit of he's, a fight. Yeah, he's in an advanced position right now. I wonder if that ult or, you know, wasn't taken and given to Cilantro here, but... Everyone from Kent State's also rotating, though. Yeah, but if you're OU, I mean, you take a 5v5 retake here. Ooh, Eton barely survives that. Illinox gets the kill on Hiccup. False trades him out. Ray's gets a kill on Paka, making a 4v3. Aki gets the kill on Eton oh. and Cilantro. Oh, the round is over. Yeah, no, I mean, that was a good idea. I, I really would have just wished that OU kind of played around that Viper's Pit a little bit more. Um, but at the end of the day, right, 5v5 retake on site. You're going to take that if you're an attacker. Um, it just happened that Kent State was able to recover a little bit faster than OU, I think, thought that they were going to be able to. Um, and that's kind of what ha allowed it to be, hey, we're getting the spike down, and then it kind of felt like they got jumped there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they I think they were feeling pretty good about that plant mm -hmm. position. It was still, what, a 5v5 at that point? Yeah, no, Eton had gotten in a really advanced position, and that's all you can really ask for your lurker player in that scenario, but yeah. kind of like what we saw OU doing, right? They were letting can get onto the A site and playing really heavy retake, and that's exactly what happened to OU in that round. A lot of shooting happening on B main, but not a lot of killing. Oh, look at this spot from Literal Chad. Literal oh. Chad gets two! Three, actually! Hiccup had the jump on him, but he just flicks back and gets him. Oh. Cilantro gets the kill on Swaggy. Literal Chad makes it out. Yeah, no, I mean, that's just a situation where you tell your teammates, hey, don't swing him. But then they swing, you know, them, and then all of a sudden, that's how that happens. Three in the round. Both for... Kemp State players on yellow. Player it's a trade. Cilantro is the only one left. And he doesn't quite know where little Chad is, but literal Chad knows where he is. Oh, Aki gets the kill, finishes the round. Yeah, I mean, that was just... A really great individual play out from the harbor there mm -hmm. um you know if you're it, it's kind of funny right if you're if you're hiccup there you're telling your team hey don't swing him right the literal chad just swings into your team and that kind of throws you off and the easiest shots to hit in valorant are always the hardest ones yeah. right he had yeah. to jump on him and that's always the hardest shot to hit um so you know kind of a bit of a blunder out from ou but Hey, I mean, it's still 8 to 8. They're going to have to go for a save here. All sheriffs. There is also an operator in play on the defense side. Yeah, and again, this is a big, pretty big round in the half for, for OU. That second round, or that the round previous, that was the big round. But if they're able to recover here, putting themselves in a really good spot for the rest of the game. They're getting involved, at least, in this beat. Ooh, Packa gets an entry on literal Chad. That's pretty huge. Yeah, make it up for last round. They know that there's an op in CT. Swaggy gets two, though, from sight. Yeah, and that's going to hurt. I mean, they might still want to commit here. They have that Resurrect available to them, and they should have the Sage Wall, but... Everyone's watching behind for a Lurk. Yeah, whether or not... Ooh, Swaggy comes through yellow, though, and gets two. That might be an ace. Ooh. Oh, full stops the ace. With a clean headshot. Yeah, but that's just an operator posted up in that angle. This is going to be really difficult for False here, unless he catches oh. the timing. He's watching right where he's about to. No, not at quite, actually. 30 seconds left. Let's see. A key is watching the other side as well. False pushing up and gets caught by the op. That's fine, honestly. Yeah, no, I mean, that was kind of as bog standard of a, you know, forced round. Yeah. Right? I think getting two kills, it's kind of the average, maybe a bomb plant down. But, you know, if you're OU, you have a couple pretty key ultimates up here. You have that Resurrect available. You have that Viper's Pit from, you know, the third round still available. And you're one off something else. I can't see the scoreboard right now, but 
it could be a pretty, you know, impactful round here for OU. One off that Hunter's Fury. That could be big for a post plant situation. Going for a B hit again. Yeah, and it seems like they, they've really liked kind of taking the fight to Kensei in D main. The drone right. saw the harbor. They sort of pre-fired through that wall. And then Force the harbor back. That operator is going to be posted up on that A site. You see that jet over there in the top left? OU might be walking straight into it. They should know Kent has an op. They, they, they realized that last round, so... Should if they peek at the wrong time here, one of them is definitely going to go. Yeah, should be able to play around it here, but... Knife goes out, is going to catch them. Yes, two hostiles detected. Yeah, and just seeing that jet, that should signal to OU that, hey, the operator is here. No better character to wield, to wield that than jet on this map. The Sova dart doesn't quite see them. And everyone from Kent State has rotated over, and there's a flank behind OU right now. Yeah, look at this. Look how slow this is. Swaggy's going to probably catch out at least one or two. Oh, offensive uh, Viper's pit. False, false. gets two. Swaggy gets two again, making it a three. V3, it's a 2v2. So let's get the kill on Raze, 2v1. It's just the harbor, and he's pulled back a little bit. Yeah, no, and they can just both play in this Viper's Pit. This is really bad for this harbor. He doesn't really have any utility to kind of break through this and hiccup. And so he goes back to see him. Oh, oh my God. Flicks over for the kill, wins the round. That's a fatal kiss on the cheek there, and yeah. that was a great round out of OU. I mean, that was just really well played. False getting two here, and that, that, that flank from Swaggy, again, that was kind of brutal, but... Cilantro, we don't see it here, but that was an insane catch through the smoke there. To kind of put this in a 2v1 and yeah, a little Definitely. kiss of death at the end there. And OU now with a one round advantage, Ooh. and they should have an economical advantage. Actually, I take that back. This is another gun round. Kent, if they lose this, honestly, either team, if they lose this, going into an eco next round. This, this game is really making me sweat. Big. Yeah, no, I mean. And excuse me, OU does not have a one-round advantage. Oh my god, Swaggy is pushed up so far. Yeah, he did this in the early game, and even if Hiccup flashes this, I don't know if he clears that. He is not. I don't think he's ready for this at all. The wall goes down, Swaggy gets the kill on Hiccup. He gets traded out by Swalantro, though. That's a good trade here, and False has this resurrect available. That's in such a good spot for OU. This should be just a free res. Yes, yeah. He can make this a 5v4 again. Uh-oh. Oh, Hunter's Fury's out. Gets wow. Hacka and catches... Hiccup wow. and false. That's three kills off the Hunter's Fury. That was such a smart Hunter's Fury. That res is in a spot. It's just a straight corridor. There's not really much else to go. The fact that it catches three is brutal. It should have only caught two, right? The idea was, hey, yeah. you're getting a res off. I'm going to kill at least the person who just got rezzed. Oh, Illinox swung out. Didn't get killed. Is going to re-swing. There's two more. They have a crossfire a little bit. This could get a little, a little freaky over here. Eton, depending on how he swings it, not going to do it, though. And They almost killed the harbor just by shooting through, but Slauncher is also on one. Yeah, and unless Kent State kind of forfeits some 1v1s to OU here, this should be Oh, secure. dart out. Location revealed. Illinox is going to swing it. Gets Eton and Slauncher to finish the round. Yeah, no, I mean, that was just a brutal Hunter's Fury. I, I said it was going to be free. I, I thought it was, but... Yeah, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. That was an insane play out of uh, the Soba for Kent State. Definitely. That was that was round-winning. Easy. Yeah, that just made so much sense there to pop the Hunter's Fury there. It's such a tight corridor. Um, and the fact, that, again, that it got three, that's what makes it brutal. It should have gotten minimum one, maximum two, but... Another that was very player clever. happened to be in the in the crossfire there. They're going for a B hit again. Yeah, and we just OU loves this B site, right? I think oh, they Oh, they rotated out though. You know, showing presence there, and this could be pretty okay for OU. We had a lot of Kent State players stacked up towards A. A little bit of a gamble stack, and we see them kind of slowly dispersing across after OU made a little bit of presence known on the B site. Kent State is slowly pushing up a little bit behind them, but not very much. OU has almost made it to sight. False has cleared most of the corners here. 
And a Hunter Shiri and a Null Command open for OU if they want to use it here. Oh, Knife Out catches two. And the Harbor ult is going to make it very hard for OU here. They're just going to pull back, it looks like. They are going to see the Jet in the back. He gets one, he gets two. He gets four. Doesn't get the ace, though. Packet stops with the classic. Swaggy kills him, wins the round. Point, Kent State. Yeah, I mean, at least the ace is denied there, but 9-11. Uh, OU down two rounds here, and they're kind of looking for something. They have three theater alts available to them. And arguably, these Time are some of, the most, some of the, the most impactful alts in the game. All right, yeah. So Lemur is going to call a timeout here to uh, try to pump up his team and make sure they don't lose here. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's been a really close game, right? This is a really close map, too. It's a two-round difference, and we're kind of getting to the point where individual plays are going to start mattering a lot, right? Yes. Uh, stuff like that that clutch that we saw with the no-scope op you know, earlier on, right? Just things like that that's really going to decide getting into the nitty-gritty of this map now. It's going to come down to a lot of individual individual plays and, you know, team play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, isolating some favorable 1v1s would be mm -hmm. very, very big here. Um, yeah. And not getting hit by, you know, massive ultimates that kill three would be would be pretty important too. Yeah, and if you're OU, right, this could also be a thing where you might be starting to lose steam here. It, it's been a pretty long map. Um, and so just calling a timeout and say, hey, you know, we're pretty close to the end here no matter which way it rolls over. Um, and just kind of don't lose steam, right? Keep playing as hard as you are because you're so close. It's a two-round yeah. difference. Get, get a little bit of a breath of fresh air, you know, relax, settle back in. Don't try to don't try to worry too much. Don't stress out too much. Mm -hmm. Get back into the groove. Deploying drone. Aldrin's going to clear out B main here. And a knife on yellow sees no one. Now there is Swaggy pushed up through yellow now. But they're going to drop the lockdown to clear and out this sight. Sh this should be pretty icy. Swaggy swings and gets oh. false and a hiccup. Eton trades him out. That was a lot of value though. Two kills there is brutal, especially with the lockdown used so aggressively. That should have just cleared him out. But Oh, three can state players are coming on flank here. No one pack gets one. Raze trades him out. Aki gets one, Eton gets one, loses two players left on Kent, point Kent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, that was just brutal. Uh, Swaggy getting two kills there. That KJ lockdown, it should have cleared him out, but... Yes, yeah. You know, he got he got proactive, he knew he needed to swing, and sometimes it just comes down to that. It's a shooting game, right? Yeah, that was a smart play, I think, by Swaggy, by waiting there, knowing that he was going to die, probably, and just trying to get at least a pick. Mm-hmm. And now we see OU kind of, you know, back against the wall. Throw out anything you have in the playbook at this point. You still have that Hunter's Fury. You still have that Null Command. You know, one's a really powerful ult for getting onto site. The other's a really powerful ult for keeping site, right, in a post-plant situation. Illinox is going to buy an op and watch B here. Yeah, and that's something that's kind of new introduced to OU this round. They don't know that there's an op available, right? They know that Illinox could have bought one, right? They can see the credit amount available to Kent State, but False needs to find Ooh. this kill. False does not get swaggy. He almost had him. Eton trades him out, though. Makes it a 4v4. They jump peek the op. See that they have one. That's good information. If you're OU, you're going to take this. This little 20-second exchange at the beginning of the round. It's a 4v4. You know where the op is. You're on attack. You're always going to take a one-player, or like a 4v4 advantage here. They're all rotating back through a main. Yeah, and that Viper being down, honestly, I'd rather have my Sage dead than my Viper dead. That Viper util is so crucial for how Kent State wants to play their rounds out here. And I'm looking at Literal Chad here. This is a crazy spot. Oh, Literal Chad was caught by the jump peak. He has to drop down. They know where he is. He's in the corner. Look at They're that gonna throw util. all the util to try to kill him. Gets him with the Molotov. Raze is caught in the back here. corner. Oh, Gets Raze. two. Should have the res up here, and this is going to be a 3v2. Kent State has to weather the storm here and strike going down. Null Command finally expires for the side of Hiccup. Hiccup sees Illinox. Bladestorm is out. And Bladestorm's done with already. That was all five knives. Kind of 
Oh, shock dart out from a key. Look at this fight from Eton. This is everything in the round here. Cilantro kills Illinox, making a 1v2. Smart. Smart. And Cilantro gets the kill on that key. Point Ohio. We yeah, I mean, that was just that was just really good kind of team execution there from OU, right? Look at literal Chad. I mean, he is just in an absolute hellscape. That is like three pieces of utility thrown at him right there. Really smart play from Hiccup to swing through the smoke, right? It's kind of throwing his life away, but he has that null command up, right? He's going to get res pretty, pretty much immediately. And OU kind of knew how they wanted to play that round. They got the Harbor ult and the, the Jet ult out from Kent State. That could be big later on. Definitely. Just two away from the Viper's Pit, three away from the KJ, KJ Lockdown. And they have that Hunter's Fury available to them. Two rounds is all that stands between the Bobcats and Kent State. Ohio's going to do a little split here. here. And Swaggy is pushed all the way through to bottom mid. Well, Hiccup saw him and shot him a little bit. A little bit of a damage on Swaggy, but nothing, you know, too impactful for the rest of this round. A little jump spot out. False call raise. Could right get caught out oh, here, yeah. Elinox gets the kill. I didn't even see where he was. Yeah, he was just up on... I forget what that spot is, but... Heard yeah, the that big, like, out. generator-looking thing. Ooh. Oh, Cilantro gets the kill on Swaggy as he tries to lurk behind through B. Yeah, easy as you like it there from Cilantro, I mean... Ohio almost has B control. Take that every day. Yeah, and they do. I mean, they have this Viper's wall going to go up. And again, this is Swaggy dead in the round. That's all the Viper utility not able to be used here for the side of Kent State. And this Viper wall goes up and pit. Everyone is on B site. Hiccup gets Illinox. Raze trades him out, though. Cilantro. Makes it a 3v3. Hunter's Fury. A key gets Cilantro. Well, Lockdown got destroyed. Hunter's Fury 12 seconds left of the round, they have to stick the plant. He's planting Paka to defend him, and this is a big flank out from the harbor. Oh, the Sova's still on sight. That's a Paka gets him, though! It's just the harbor left. They don't know where he is, they're clearing around through back CT. Yeah, and he's on a full flank here, he's committed a lot into this, and I think OU kind of the wiser at this point. It's been too long for him to be playing anywhere near Snowman around his team, and they kind of know where he's at. Pack is about to see him. Oh, literal Chad with a nasty push there. Just flicks him in the head. Just needs to play time here. He knows this should be around one. He took a kill, 11 to 12. Didn't even flinch. He popped that. He popped that nano swarm. He knew that he had gotten off the bomb to kill the nano swarm, and so he just knew he wasn't on the bomb. Didn't need to press the advantage or anything. And that's a map-winning play out from Eton there. This is one round away from OU forcing overtime on the Golden Flashes. This is huge. I'm sweating. Yeah, I know. I mean, this is... Kind I of saw you jump out of your chair after yeah, that. As close as you can get here. Now, Kent State, they kind of have a kind of weird buy here. Swaggy with a judge. I mean, that's not too... Honestly, that's not even too uh, abnormal for a Viper, especially one with a Viper's Pit. And if you're OU, you want to avoid that B site as much as you oh, they saw the jet forcing Illinox to retreat back. They're going for an A push. Yeah, three KJ players lockdown. from Kent on site, though. KJ Lockdown available for OU here. Eton, such a big part of last round and could be an even bigger part of this round. They saw Raze there dropping the Killjoy Lockdown. Yep, Gonna clear up sight. Here. Yeah. They don't want to get too zealous. You remember that round when Swaggy found two after the KJ Lockdown yes. had already been popped? They're staying back, right? They're letting people plant and playing this as a 5v5 retake. Sage Hiccup. wall goes up for the plant. This is an advanced spot. He's in no man's land. Cilantro gets a kill on Raze. I didn't see where that was. I don't even, but Hiccup. Oh, oh Illinox gets a kill on Hiccup. That was crazy. He just hit a 180. 4v4. False, False knows where they are. Literal Chad gets him, though. Illinox hits Paka. Eton gets Illinox, so, so Swaggy gets Eton. It's a 1v2 Cilantro now. Gets Swaggy. Cilantro's in a 1v2. 1v1. Oh, 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 with a 4k flux from Cilantro. Four of the most important kills in this game out from Cilantro. How did he win that? That was insane. He didn't even saw him for half a second. Just hit left click.
Just oh, pray to God that it hit. Wasn't even on his screen in the last shot, Cilantro. What are you doing to these people? That's overtime force for OU. That was wild. All right, we're gonna see overtime. Insane. Wow, that was a 1v3 at some point? 1v2 at least, but... Damn, I mean, what a shot out from Cilantro. That was just, what a performance. So, do you want to explain the overtime rules? Yeah, sure. So this is now kind of like volleyball rules. It's first to... Or it's win by two at this point. Whichever team has two more rounds than the other team is going to win. And after every round, we swap which side uh, a team is on. So OU going to be on the defense here for one round. They have about 5,000 credits each. That's enough to buy a gun and most of their abilities. False got the drone with his op. Kent State knows that there's an operator on B site. Yep, so pretty much full gun rounds out for the rest of the game until one team has a two-round advantage. And that could be either Kent State 2 0 OU or OU forcing a map three. Kent State is going to full rotate to A site here, but Ohio is thinking it's going to be a B hit. Yeah, no, they have a lot stacked on that B site. They have KHA utility, they have a Sage, they have a Viper, but they do have that Viper wall on A, right? That can be pretty important for, you know, just delaying at least temporarily, but Kent State looking to execute heavily onto the A site. Pack is about to see something. Wall goes up from Harbor. And, and everyone okay. in Ohio's doing a little bit of a rotate. Planting from Kent State. They have full sight control. Illinox gets a kill on Hiccup. And that's tough out from the side of Oh, oh you full the flick! Send him straight to the hospital there. Now oh you in a 4v4 and Packing Illinox gets a kill on Illinox in a 4v3. Eton's gonna spray the bomb just in case. Nano swarms already popped here, and this is a lot of sustain for Kent State down early in the round here. Pack is gonna defuse, and he's False sticking it for another one. Not gonna get it, but Pack is over halfway. He almost has it done, and he defuses the bomb. Kent State for Ohio is yeah. objective there. Yeah. I mean, that was just. I, I don't know. Kent State just forgot about the bomb. You fought well. They knew it was getting defused, but they didn't really have anything to stop it, right? They used those nano swarms so early into the spike defusal time, and that last one even missed. You can look at that one. Yeah. It got popped. Everyone was playing get from, off it. Uh, back in A main, and they just couldn't yeah, no, see it, that's, I guess. That, that's, a really, that's a really nice idea, but... <laughs> I mean, taking cheers to Red Bulls, I guess. Fellas, it is 941. You are not going to sleep tonight, but... <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm not either after this map. 13-12 OU. One round away from forcing a map three on Haven. Against what's prospectively probably a top three team in this ESC season. Yeah, definitely, with the way that they've been playing. Mm -hmm. Again, this is coming off of, uh, what, a 2-13 loss on map yeah. one? Uh, that just shows a lot of resilience mentally, honestly, for me. Uh, just being able to bounce back from that, and now you're one round away from forcing a really great team into a map three really uncomfortable map three if there's any team that's riding momentum right now it is OU. absolutely yeah and i uh i really i really hope they win this and we can see that map three because this mm. is this is just a great game that we're watching right now yeah i know i mean this is this has been this has been insane there's been a couple absolutely ridiculous plays for both sides this game i think no aces yet several 4ks but no aces yeah no aces yet yeah I think what two four Ks, one from Cilantro, one. I think from... there was more than two. There might have been three. Yeah, I mean it's been again. That's just the most fun Valorant when it's just individualistic like that, right? You get insane plays. It's fun watching, you know, team play, but I'd rather watch a four K. I'd rather watch, you know, that one v two Cilantro clutch. Any oh, day you was gonna go for an A hit here. False is doing a little bit of a jiggle peek, trying to see if he can spot anyone. And look how heavy Kent State is towards that left side of the map. They don't have that many players. Owl drone is out. Right. Gets broken by Rays in the back. Hiccup clears off that generator on the right. And flashes Jet through the wall. Up. Pushes. Jet has to dash back. They know where she is. And that's a ton of damage from these nano storms. On Recon now. bolt out though. Okay. Illinox gets a kill on Cilantro. Spike is down. And the... Viper's throwing a molly onto it. Yeah, this is so much damage based on util alone Ooh. for the side of Kent State. Uh, oh, it's a 1v4 now, though. And they tie it up. Back to 
Yeah, no, that was just, I mean, really well played, honestly, from the side of Kent State's KJ. That was so much damage. I'd love to see the number. We can't see it, but so much damage and delay just from that Viper Molly and that KJ Molly. You Ilan saw Hawks is sitting on 30 kills this game. Yeah, no, he's having an absolute heater of a game. But for the side of OU, it's pretty balanced, right? Yeah. You've kind of gotten a lot of the players that, especially comparing cilantro from the end of the first half to now, he had one kill at the end of the first half. He's at 21 right now. It's like it's going to be a B hit and a high yeah, false hit. Again Ooh, with this almost operator. gets that. This is super gonna... dangerous. Oh, he gets Illinox with a crazy flick. That was nasty. Six feet under. What a hospital flick out of false. And that's such a big play. That was just disgusting to watch. Yeah, defining part of this round. And I mean, again, that's just individualism right there. I mean, talk about taking the round over. Oh, what is happening over here on A site, though? Paka and uh, Swaggy on either side of the wall here. Yeah, this could be big. I mean, Hiccup Ooh. should get traded if they even try to aggress out before the rest of their team get here. Oh, False has taken an upward position with the Operator. Knife is out from Hiccup. He doesn't know that Swaggy's there. Swaggy gets the kill. Packa gets a Shock Dart kill and a Packa key. Packa gets a Shock Dart kill. Eton taking this fight here and... You know, just, I think 4v3 I heard it called for don't Ohio. fight, right? Oh, you kind of on the same page here. They want to play this in a 4v3 retake and they're fine with that. Owl drone's gonna be huge in clearing out things, and Kent State, they have a Sova ultimate, but the Sova sees another, doesn't quite hit the flick, but Swaggy gets traded out by Eton. Yeah, great trade. There is a little bit of, of you know, delay for the side of Kent State with that KJ up, but is it gonna be enough? Both of them are playing from A main again, and they miss with the swarm Look grenade, at it looks this, like. This... Raises one. Little Chad got two, though, it's just Eton in a 1v2. And he's Joe oh, on 5 HP. Wow. That was rough. That was some insane shots out from Literal Chad there. I mean, again, round defining right there, if you yeah. want to talk about it. That KJ was not in a spot, didn't have the HP, didn't have the positioning to set up those nano swarms. But if you're shooting like that, giving haircuts out left and right, I mean, it'll do the job there. And Kent State now in a one round advantage here. Almost two players eclipsing 30 kills. Ohio's going to need to win this round to get a chance to take it to the third map. You know, I mean, if you're OU, you're looking at three rounds in a row at this point to take back the, the game, but if you're looking at it from a player's perspective, just one round at a time. One round at a time. That's what they say. They're going to do a slow little B push here, it looks like. And with how these halves went, I mean, it was 6-6. Six, six. Both halves get us to overtime. It really unpredictable on which team's going to be better at which side. This Al drone is going to see the harbor. Forces him back. Yeah, I mean, he gets cleared out. That's good util usage for OU. At least clears out one with the Al drone, but... Cooling down. And that, that, that is a... No, that isn't a rechargeable ability. That's going to be expended for OU. And Al drone, it's a pretty big piece to use this early in the round. Knife run. catches nothing on yellow. Jump peak sees nothing, but there's a harbor wall up. Yeah, I mean, how many times have we seen this where Kent State... It gives, it gives the illusion of giving up the site to OU, but it's just waiting right outside of it, ready to pounce. He the second grab the spike to commit here. They don't oh. do it. So, False is pushed up pretty far on A site. He hasn't cleared it out. There is still a jet on site. I'm not sure if he knows that or not. But yeah, Kent's heard those footsteps. That AKJ is rotating really early through mid. They heard those footsteps, and they're going to be on this site to meet OU. False puts up the wall. Raze gets a kill on Paco. Cilantro trades out. Swaggy trades Hiccup. out again. Hiccup trades out again. Makes it a 3v3. Hiccup. Gets the kill on Illinix. Make it a 3v2. On their top fragger as well. That's big to bring broke. that Aldron early. Only spots Hiccup, not a single other player. And Eton is it's, Eton and False are doubled up down here. Oh, oh, and False just saw a literal Chad. But I love this positioning out of Eton. If they kill one of these players here, they're not going to expect the other. That is a good point. Little Chick gets the kill on Hiccup. If if he falls down here, he's going to see both. Eton gets the kill, though. It's a 1v2. A key gets the kill on False through the box. 
Knows where Eton is. Eton knows where he is. It's a 1v1 duel. He's just playing the time. Play and and Aki's not going to have time to defuse. She's not going to have time. Wow. He dies, but it doesn't matter because he wins the rounds. I mean, a little shake and bake behind the box there from Eton, and that just buys enough time. That was good. That was good. That was good time management. I know, and I mean, I love that doubled up positioning down there. If you kill one, you're not going to expect the other. Obviously, that didn't happen, right? Uh, I believe it was what, the harbor just dropped out harbor, anyways. Yeah. Doesn't really matter as much there, but OU finds himself even in the 29th round of the game. And you could also see, I liked when the harbor fell. He sort of looked to the right, then looked to yeah. the left, then looked to the right. Yeah. He was he was not he prepared at all. Shoot at, right? He didn't know what he was shoot at. And OU again now, 28th round here. 29th round, excuse me. Two players in the side of Kent State, now over 30 kills. Yeah. Looks like we might see a little bit of mid action here. Ooh, Eton got shot a little bit. Just grazed. Look at this advanced positioning out from Swaggy here. That's right next. It's a really sore spot for the defense, right? If, if this kind of kitchen area gets taken by the attackers, that opens up the map a lot for them. Pack a kill Swaggy, though. I don't know where he saw him from. Yeah, that was into tunnel. That was that little window. And that, oh. that's huge because if OU had relinquished that part of the map, that opens it up a lot. And this is just going to be a full-on A exec from the side of Kent State. We've seen this a million times. Same old story. OU giving up the site. Going to play retake. They're okay with this. Kent State is planting. Um, Ohio knows that they have a 5v4, though. Looks like they're going to wait for their teammates to get here before they do anything rash. You might be looking at playing around Hunter's Fury later in the game here, but with that one kill on Paka, it's not really that big of an issue. Oh, swarm grenade out on bomb and alarm bot broken. Pickup's gonna flash through, catches one with it, but doesn't get the kill. Recon dart saw a lot. Paka gets two! Sees the third! Sees the fourth! Knows where the last one is! Just gonna push through with the classic, gets killed by Illinix. Oh, and Pulse gets the kill to win the rounds. Wow. Point Ohio, they have advantage. Hacko is just an absolute hero in that round, finding the pick to give OU the advantage at first, and then what a collateral out from him, just lining up, lining him up, knocking them down in false. Kind of a scary gun to put, yeah. you know, as in the last shot of the round. You missed that. That could be a very different story with the other player on the diffuser, but... He feels confident with it. It's a 15th now for Ohio, and going into the 30th round of the game, this is where you just kind of start getting a little little tired, right, for both sides. Hey, we might be here all night. No, we might be here all night, and that's 32 kills now, highest in the lobby, and just what an even game. I mean, you see just the, the kill difference. It, it's really non-existent. Ooh, Cilantro gets the kill on Swaggy. Swaggy taken out oh, early in the round again, and look at this aggressiveness from the Jet on Kent State. He could get caught out here. Oh, he's not hes not ready for false around this corner, though. No, but Eton and Cilantro decided to take the fight to him, and he's kind of, kind of a weird spot. Oh, Raze gets the kill on false, though, from top. They, I don't know if they were expecting two of them there. They're going to chase them down back to sight. And as much as you hate to see a 5v4 kind of, you know, thrown away, if you're an OU fan, this is still a 4v4. You still are favored if you're on the attacking side. It kind of splits the defense a little bit thin, but OU very much so deciding to end on this this a site here recon dart sees nothing and it looks like the all of kin state's gonna go for a rotate onto a kj utility is broken now and this should be a free site but illinox illinox gets a kill on eton cilantro really trades out aki gets a kill on cilantro though makes it a 2v3 and pickup those is are, very patient those are kent state's two biggest hitters out of the round for ou left. it's a 2v3 always a chance here can you see that Sova rotating out towards B? This is a 2v2 on that pump site now. Yeah, I'm just going to rotate. Aldrone saw them both. Plays. Hiccup. This is a big fight, Hiccup. Hiccup with the flick on literal Chad. Going to stick to the fuse. Oh, no. Pack Six out of the points allowed. He's going to convert. And Ohio wins that map, taking it to the third map of Haven. Wow. Again, just individual heroics coming out for the side of OU. What wow. a shot by Packer. That was crazy. To finish the round off. And we're going to a map three on Haven. It's 9.53. We're going to be here probably past 11, but I do not care. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
If 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 uh, round three goes, you know, thirty to thirty, so be it. Yeah, and just like they were saying, just like we were saying, right? One more round. They're saying one more map. All right, it's zero zero. Right? Score is zero zero right now. It's completely even. All that matters is this next Haven map. Anybody's game. Yeah, and I don't know if either of these teams have really played Haven that much. It's kind of a weird map to scrim this early in the season. So it might get even more chaotic than it was on Icebox. Yeah, we'll definitely see. Um, from what I heard from the coach earlier, they feel pretty confident about Haven. I mean, Not as confident as Icebox, but definitely confident. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel confident too, right? I yeah. mean, you know that you can hang with these guys at this point. You take a map off any team, right? You know you're in that echelon, right? Valorant's a long game. It's not, it's not, um, it's not random, right? If you take a map off a team, you are on that level of that team, and all that matters now is who wants it more at this point. Absolutely, absolutely, and they've definitely Ohio was warming up all through that match. Oh yeah, you know? no, 100%. they had a rough start, first match didn't go their way. They, you know, it wasn't it wasn't perfect. It wasn't, they, but yeah. they've cleaned up a lot here. Yeah, and just to put it into perspective, Eton and Cilantro really stepped up on that Icebox map. Both of them had one kill combined at the at the half, right? And it was yeah. and it was six six still, right? They they were stepped up massively to deliver on a couple big kills, right? Them both and a lot of individual plays to take OU to that sixteenth round. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we're gonna go on a ten minute break. We'll be back around ten fifty or ten oh five. Excuse me. For that map three on Haven, uh, don't miss it.
Welcome back to ESC Valorant Action. This is week one, and we have the o OU Bobcats taking on the Golden Flashes here. We're going to map three. We're going to map three. We're, we're taking this a distance right now. We're taking it to Haven. Yeah, taking it to Haven. And again, Haven's kind of like the Wild West in terms of Valorant maps early in the season, especially. Uh, it's not really popular for a lot of teams to start out scrimming on. I think you see a lot of Ascent, a lot of Icebox, um, and a lot of Lotus. I think those are like the three yeah. main maps you see a lot of teams. Lotus, kinda... really? Yeah, I think Lotus is pretty popular. Okay. Um, just because I was gonna ask if if Haven is, is the is the weird one. Is it because it is three sites or it's it's also three sites and just like I feel like Lotus shares a lot of similarities with other maps, right? Yeah. Like Haven's just weird. Like Lotus, you have like you know, a where you like you have that big open sight line to fight on. It's kind of like fighting in a mid area, right? Haven. It's just kind of weird. It's a, it's very close. It's one of the original three maps in Valorant. Um, so it just kind of has a lot of old design quirks that don't really carry over to a lot of newer maps right now. Um, but yeah, we're seeing OU and Kent State. I would assume if I had to guess, right? Um, map picks are kind of weird. This isn't a map that either team necessarily picked. Um, they kind of banned maps until this was the last one left. Yes. Um, so it's not really like an advantage or a disadvantage for either team. Um, it's just stylistically going to be really interesting to see which team has this map a little bit more prepared, a little bit more refined, especially going into a map three. And an I, I want to uh, go. You. I was going to say, in an ideal world, it's this. This map is sort of like the mid map for both of them. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's kind of the idea of kind of map bands right if you walk mm. away with map three being like eh, okay for both teams that's kind of a pretty even map ban uh but again that happened almost two hours ago this is this series is gonna be played for well over three hours at this point um and a lot of the times in map threes it doesn't come down to like how good you are like strat strategically at a map it kind of comes down to how much more you want it when it's this late in the game yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think of these cops that we're about to see? Neon is a pretty standard um, agent to see played on this map. She's kind of gotten a lot of uh, a lot more playtime since she got buffed a while ago. I don't really remember exactly how long ago, but looking at OU's comp, it's extremely similar. The only difference is we see a jet on the side of OU and a Neon on the side of Kent State. And we're gonna see OU kind of start with, the onus is on them to have a really good half, right? Icebox is a pretty, it's not a super even map, but compared to Haven, it is pretty even. We're gonna see hopefully OU taking at least eight rounds here on their attack half. It's a very attack sided map with having three bomb sites like this, so gonna be interesting to see how OU plays this early on. It looks like they're gonna go for a garage push here. Yeah, and I think this is gonna be what? Has OU want a pistol round tonight? Uh, no. I do not, not believe sure. so. I don't think so. And False here has an option. Does he want to press They're all e again blinded. Dash out, but he decides against it. That Omen smoke, even just that one bit of utility can be a lot of... It, it causes a lot of trouble, especially on pistol rounds where... Most of the time, most of these players don't have their full kit available to them. Hmm. They're rotating back towards A site, where they... Cypher got a little bit of some sight line here on A, on A long, but not too much. Can't really yeah, see if I there's mean, a guy watching it. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of pretty standard setup out here from Kent State, right? A 2-1-2. Um, with that breach kind of probably not going to be fighting for B if it gets hit. More of a retake type deal, but Neon and Sova definitely entrenched here on this A site. Hiccup looks like he's about to start this push on the A site. Recon dart is out, spots nothing. The breach fault line goes through. And the there's a counter made one. For Kent State to try to fight this. Aki gets the first on kill site. on Paka, and Eton is also down. Hiccup kills Aki though. That's a big kill out from False. That's equalizing around here, and Spike needs to go down here. Hiccup, False with oh, another one. Oh. Hiccup! Oh. That was three that was in the round, and yeah. I mean, it didn't look that good to start the round for OU, right? They were kind of in a bad spot, but a couple really key kills out of Hiccup and False here. This is a big one. This is what equalized the round here, 
And just from there, right? False. Two kills in the round. Hiccup, three kills in the round. They had the ghosts. They were set up, right? The rest of the OU, I don't want to say it was death fodder, but the players that you needed to step up there in that round stepped up. And you saw at the end there, Hiccup, as soon as he won that round, stood up. Yeah, no, he got, his hands yeah, out. he got up. He Asked, got up. Are you not entertained? And that's what I mean by at this point in the series, it's about who wants it more, right? It's about who's still got their got their head in the game here this late. It, it's it's exhausting playing. Al Jones sees nothing on C. At this high of a level for so long here. But it looks like they're not gonna push it. And we see Neon in a pretty advanced position. We should have that Aldrone, though, to kind of clear them out from that position. Fault though. line goes through Garage, but doesn't get the Cypher, who is about to peek out, hits oh, one. False? Ooh. Uh. Illnox gets a kill on Eton, pack of trades him, though. Yeah, I mean, not the best outcome for OU, but also not the worst. False had the right idea, but literally at the last possible second turned away before he could catch a glimpse there. Oh, Swaggy got Hiccup. He turned away just at the wrong time. False is going to dash through on a sight. Up on top. Sees Swaggy. Sees that he's blind. He gets the kill. Yeah, they I have mean, B control and are going to plant. It's a bit of an ugly round out from OU. It's a 3v3, but at this point, you just want to win it at all costs. It's all that matters here. It's a nice TP out from Cilantro. Has the weaponry to take that fight here, and these are just classics from the rest of Kent State. Pulse gets the kill on Raze from back sight. And Cilantro gets the kill on a key, gets a headshot, doesn't even need it, he's so low. Pulse gets the kill on Little Chad to finish out the round with three remaining. And this is five kills out from Pulse early on. He might be pretty close to his Blade Storm. That could be a very defining ultimate in this round for OU. I wouldn't be mad if he popped it, gave a gun to someone else, and OU tried to run with it. They have the momentum here. Absolutely, they only took two deaths that round, so they're gonna need to buy. If they buy one, he could he could pass over his gun, pop plate storm. Yeah, it, start, eco. It, it definitely started off a little bit a little bit hazy there, right? I mean, you had two players survive. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, by the way. Coach is getting some fan mail. Yeah, so false doesn't have the blades to pop yet. Uh just not available to him probably pretty soon, but oh, you gonna try to make this expensive for Kent State regardless. OU's going for a little bit of a mid push here. And it looks like they're prepared for Swaggy to go through Garage this time. Yeah, and I mean, this is just kind of a thing that I've noticed throughout this series. You see Kent State kind of get a lot more reserved in the types of plays that they've been going for. I don't want to say they've been humbled, but OU picked up on the things that they were doing in map one especially and kind of turned it against them. Kent State's defenses have kind of been pretty stagnant. And we're seeing a couple Ooh. jiggle peeks out Take here flight. here and there, but it's not like they have a lot of control in any main here. Aldrone sees nothing through A. The Neon backs away <laughs> just out of its view. A fault line comes through from the breach on B. Slow down this push a little bit, but it looks like they know it's going to be an A hit. Left. Yeah, and I mean, look at the spike here. It's in their spawn still. Swaggy gets the kill on Eton, though, lurking out through Garage. It looks like uh, Omen tries to trade out, but Swaggy's already gone. He goes and gets the spike. Oh. Ooh, Illinox gets the pill on Paka. Only 13 seconds left in the round. I don't think they're going to have time to get the spike there. Especially in a 2v5. 1v5. He gets one. He gets two. I mean, not the worst bonus in the world, right? That, again, that's kind of just a bog standard bonus. You'd love to see the spike get planted, but, you know, two kills, it's about what you're expecting. And False has his ultimate available for himself. Probably not going to use it here. Probably going to save it for a possible eco later on. Oh, no, he's going to pop it right now. Never mind. False is sitting on seven kills after three rounds as well. I know. I mean, he's been electric, especially through those first two, three rounds here. Bladestorm going to get popped early on here, and this is a lot of fighting out from Kent State towards that C site. That's three players. This is Ooh, really fast. That Neon pushed out quick. Man, look how advanced they are already. B site is totally open, looks like, besides, uh, what, one Cypher trip? And Aldrin to clear out Garage here. That's giving OU valuable space on the map here. 
doesn't quite see anyone. Illinox is about to peek. They see him. Ooh, they also saw the breach. He's getting out aggressive. Oh, oh false. Not quite getting the breach, but almost. I like the effort. Eton got red. Little go, Chad go. gets. Oh, it's a 3v3. A lot of trades happening. There's a shorty kill in there. Wait, look at this omen flank, though. Look at this omen flank. Cilantro's gonna pick up one, and now this Neon two. completely Ooh, isolated. Illinox, gonna get traded out. 2v1. Cypher's in garage on the other side of the spike. They just yeah, got it, though. You'd love to see Eton And he pushed through. Yeah, he's, he's out on site. This could be disastrous. He might come directly behind the omen here. Cilantro what's doesn't what's know. Oh! Standing. Cilantro knows where- Oh, Swaggy gets the kill, just taps the head. Yeah, that was such an insane timing, but they were given a chance there, at least in that 1v1. But, I mean, what a, that, that's as close as you can get here. You would have loved to see Eton able to survive there, and that's what really opened up the round here. You've got to respect Swaggy. the hustle from Swaggy, though. I mean, pushing through like that, finding just the right time to get past them, and then getting up behind them like that. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's the type of play that you look at it, and you're like, that's objectively extremely risky. But when you're in a situation like that, in a 1v2, you got to take risks like that. And when you get to those late round scenarios, I mean, Swaggy has been so good at executing on late round situations. Not a lot of util. Comes down to pure instincts and aim there, and he shows it off again. Ohio has mostly a save here. Only one Vandal on their side. Fulse gets the trip. Ooh, Swaggy sees him, and he sees Swaggy, but no one takes any damage. Yeah, and I mean, he's got a he's got a rifle here in this round. OU, the rest of OU doesn't have, you know, any real weaponry here. They have sheriffs, but... They are shooting down C long with their sheriffs. Because he popped that blade sword in last round, he has the Vandal to use this round. Oh, and they're pushing up through B. They don't see anyone. And no one's on B. Yeah, and they're probably going to take sight quick. A lot of util. Yeah, B is kind of a uh, not honestly not too bad of a site to end on in Haven. You got three main entrances to the site here, but overall a pretty decent amount of places to get pinched from. Swaggy's trying to peek out through uh, this side. Hiccup. Hiccup gets the kill on Swaggy though. Aki and Illinox get two kills through walls, and Illinox gets a th two more, making it a three v one. After Solatro gets two. It's a 2v1. Cilantro blinds the diffuser, sees the neon. Oh, doesn't know that literal chat is hiding in the smoke. <laughs> Unlucky. Yeah, he thought he was still on the bomb there. He had tapped it and then gotten off immediately. Trying to bait him into the smoke, and that's kind of exactly what happened. That was a good play by that breach. Everybody cheer. <laughs> And there's the audience, the home, the home field advantage. The you home know. crowd, yeah. We're seeing OU go into a, a, another gun round. This is pretty crucial for how this, the rest of the staff is gonna go here. Lots and lots of ultimates available for both sides here. Kent State pretty much gonna have all five, pretty soon. Yeah, they're right there. Um, ooh, we might see a little action here on A pretty quick. Eton got fault lined. Pickup's gonna rotate back towards A, sees literal Chad on B site. And now they're pushing towards C. Swaggy's in a pretty advanced spot here in Cubby. Ooh, Interested there. to see if he gets checked. He is. Oh, he does! Pulse turns back for just a second, but then flicks back nice again. Nice dash. Lots and lots of utility. Literal Chad got here, Hiccup but... with util. They hear the Neon on sight. She has ult. She's used ult. Ray's got Packa through the smoke. Only the jet pulled out and survived. But Cilantro is going to plant on A with the teleport. Eton got a kill in CT. He's not going to have any help here. and He's kind of in no man's land. He needs to get one more kill out yeah. here. Yeah. Elnox with the stun to kill him. 3v2. Aldrin coming out. At least knows where all these players are, though. And that Aldron didn't really get much value here. Last oh. It is a 1v3 now. Fulls got one. Not enough, though. And that's a point for Kent State. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice effort, but 
that was two alts used for the side of OU. That was the Cypher ult and the Omen ult. It was a good, it was a good effort. It was a good idea, but yeah, Ishan just got caught out a little bit too much, and the rest of OU was not in a position to help him fight from that A site. The Omen ult's also not, you know, you're not losing a lot if you lose the Omen. Yeah, no, that's the thing with the Omen ult. I mean. Uh, it's as good of a time to use it as ever. Haven's also a map where Omen ult actually kind of matters a little bit, right? Because the rotations are so long. You saw OU pull most of Kent State towards C site. And then, you know, just having that fast rotation of being able to click anywhere on the map towards A. It's pretty powerful on this map. Interesting. Oh, uh, what is it? Ohio's on a half buy, it looked like. Yeah, and you're seeing kind of false kind of on this off tempo in terms of buys with the rest of the team. Because of the Blade Storm, he's gonna often have a hero rifle on a lot of these save rounds for OU. He's trying to clear out B site just a little bit. Kent doubled up here Ooh. on the B site. Hiccup got a jump peek on someone in uh what is that called? The offside uh, of A. Oh, um sewers. Sewers. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Kent say leaving C pretty much wide open. And, I mean, that's a gamble sack from Kent, but OU doesn't really have the resources to figure that out in this round. They're going to be ending on A. It looks like that gamble stack is going to pay off. OU's yeah. going to commit to A here. They know there's a Neon on site. She tries to push through and get false. False is on site, though. Doesn't get shot, really. A lot of so util going much out. util, yeah. This is an actual Everyone's war Everyone's blinded. Right can't see anything. Oh, but... Oh, Kent State gets four of them in an instant. And it's just Cilantro left. Can't do much with just a Sheriff. Yeah, I mean, that... Sova recon dart, that kind of forced them into... You, you could see, right? The second that got broken, they felt like they needed to push the tempo there. Because a lot of time had elapsed in the round already, right? Just in the position that they were, they kind of needed to end there. And that simple recon dart, right, the second it gets broken, Kent State knows there's players there, and OU's cover is kind of blown, right? They were playing around, playing that silently, walking up and contacting through, but they just weren't allowed to do that because of that recon dart. Now, looking forward, you said that uh, OU should look to get eight rounds here, but it looks like most they can get now is seven. Yeah, no, I mean, I, at this point in the game, I, I said that, but... Again, a lot of like the conventions, I guess, yeah. of what you're looking at, it kind of gets broken, right? Oh, Utah gets a, a nice entry there on A long. And he's going to get out. I mean, that was insane. But a lot of the conventions and the things that you're like, oh, this is typically what happens, doesn't really happen on map threes, especially when you've <laughs> been playing for this long, right? So, everyone's a little tired. Red Bull's wearing off. You yeah, know, and this is such gonna an Going to have to crack another. Position from the Neon. Aelanox gets a kill on Hiccup. Cut and gets out. They do know where he is because of the dart. But he gets away onto A site. Mostly unscathed. Yeah, a little worse for wear, but... Swaggy! Oh. Behind with a flank on Cilantro, pulls out again. They're just... They're just playing guerrilla tactics here. Oh no. Oh, and Swaggy gets another! And B... Uh, what is that? Sniper's Nest? Oof. Raze gets one on C. It's a 1v4 for Ohio. Pack of C's one, gets one. Doesn't get swaggy, though. A bit of a crossfire. Point for Kent State. Yeah, and I mean, that that was just really well played from Kent State, especially from Swaggy, right? They, they had that player, <clears throat> uh, Eton, on the C site, but the Cypher ult at that point had kind of isolated them, and you saw Swaggy just kind of deal with what whatever he was dealing with over by, by his side of the map. And then you saw a complete collapse onto Eton on that C site. Didn't give him a chance to even take a shot there. Yeah, Swaggy hasn't been doing as much on this map as he is on others, but he picked it up a bit in that round. Yeah, no, I mean, he was really, really kind of the story of the round for Kent State there. Now, Hunter's Fury is available for OU, but this is another kind of eco round here. They did Blade Storm. Oh, Cilantro gets a kill on Swaggy, though, in Garage. They're not going to have to deal with that lurker anymore. Yeah, and that's big. I mean, that's a Vandal now for OU. They have the Blade Storm. Hiccup doesn't know that Raze is there in the corner. They decide to push the issue, though, and just take that C site. They know it's going to be available for them in Paka. Has the Vandal here and the Hunter's Fury. This is be a big cover, cover, ultimate cover. play around for OU. Paka is going to plant now on C site. 
Neon's gonna try to push through False. and get the what kill, but he does it. False. False with the blade storm. Little Chad got cilantro. Packa traded. Ray's traded again to kill Packa. It's a two v two. Look at this cipher lurk. He hasn't. Oh, okay. Ooh, well. Now he has. Uh, but he knows that they're both in CT. I think. It's time to lay it now. Kent State knows the position of these last two OU players, and False doesn't have his Blade Storm left. Just has a classic. That was a tap on the bomb. Eton gonna be the one tasked with checking it. Tap again. Eton gets a kill on a key. Raise is very low. One bullet will kill him. Wow. And Eton gets it to wow. win the round. Yeah, I mean, what a big thing to put on Eton's shoulders. Go check that bomb, and he he delivers. I mean, he killed two. That was pretty much the round. And that's going to be a big, uh, big momentum shift here if they can yeah, capitalize no. on that. That was that was sorely needed, and that all just started from again. Swaggy just got a little bit, a little bit too, uh, you know, overzealous in the beginning of the round. Kind of gave his life away, and we saw false here. He was kind of helpless. This this round really was just all on that shot right there. And just forces Rays to kind of run into the smoke haphazardly and. That was a big round for OU to convert. And you know, that was an OUCU financial thrifty. That was an OUCU financial thrifty. I like that. I like that. Thrifty makes sense, right? Oh, Fulse is on B site. Pushed all the way through. But it looks like they're going to commit to A. I love this pinch here. And that's... Ooh, Hiccup gets the kill on Swaggy. But look at this too. Aki's not in a good spot either. And they know Fulse. where they are. Fulse gets a key. It's a 5v3. And they, they know they're all in CT. False holding the corner, but he pulls back. He's low on seven. And yeah, not gonna find this kill, but he's gonna. Eton is gonna press the issue a little bit, but gets stunned. Illinox pushes through, gets the kill on Eton. Yeah, and I mean, False is kind of deciding to be a rat in this round, right? He's kind of coming back on that flank, and he did his job, right? He got his kill on one HP now, and it's kind of putting the onus on the rest of his team here. Hiccup. Ooh, Hiccup saw the neon go through. They know that little Chad's up in heaven. He gets two. Cilantro. Cilantro and pack a kill. Oh, it's a 1v1. Oh. Ray shoots him through the box. Just barely gets his head. I like the ideas out from OU. I mean, that started off really well for that them. That was great. A great start. Yeah, it was such a nice pinch, but just a little bit of a miscommunication on who, you know, where we're shooting at. And that guy in heaven, literal Chad, he's kind of been a, a bane for us in a lot of these really crucial rounds, right? He hasn't been top in the scoreboard, but... It's just those two kills right there. A lot of impact kills. And as OU right here, you were in a 5v3, and you're going to be thinking about that, how you let that slip away from you. All right, we're going to see a time out here. Is this from uh, Kent State or from Ohio? Ohio? Uh, it should be from OU, yeah. Yeah. Lemur's walking around, pumping up his team, getting them ready. He's going to try to uh, not quite tie the half, but... Keep it competitive. Make it a little bit easier when they get the switch on defense. Which they're going to need for the three site map. I mean, just a lot of tension here, all right? You've worked for, what, two and a half hours to get to this point now? Long time. Yeah, long, long time. I'm just kind of trying to make sure that nothing goes awry. And at, at the very least, just putting your best out on the table here. Absolutely. You don't want to leave anything reserved back at mm -hmm. the end of the game. Ooh, Hunter's Fury off the round start here. Catches Eton. That's huge for Kent State. Yeah, I mean, that was just kind of used off rip, right? There wasn't even really any, you know, info info to kind of infer that there was a player there. Just kind of predicting and also catched, um, what, Paka? Yeah, also caught Paka there. Now he's minus 80 HP. That's going to be a big hit for the side of OU. Here. He really just went full send on that ult. Hmm. A lot happening in Garage here. Ray's might push through the smoke behind them. Swaggy kills False. And, oh, Ray's kills Packa, but Cilantro kills Swaggy. It's a 1v4, 1v3 now. Hiccup gets the kill on little Chad. He doesn't know the Razors, or the Neons right through here. Fault line's Garage. About to get peeked by Illinix. 
point, Kent State. Last round in the now, at the very least here, Ohio, if they lose this round, do have the 9-3 curse. The infamous 9-3 curse. Yeah, I mean, I think it... That might have started out on Haven, too, which is kind of the funny part, but... I mean, again, at the end of the day, right, you're in a map, a map 3 situation. You're not really thinking about, like, oh, we should have this amount of rounds. Just get the rounds that you can, right? One at a time. Mm-hmm. I was throwing a lot of util out here on A site. A little bit of an A split. But their bomb is still in B mid. Kent State is not rotating here really. They're not over rotating. They're just keeping they're just keeping a normal 1-2-2 two, two setup. That was a nice break from Eton there. Doesn't Give up pickup's position, having to break it himself, and for all Kent State knows, there's just one player in series right now. I saw um, Omen just barely escape the side of Swaggy with that teleport. He's rotating back towards A. Oh, Eton doesn't quite get uh, the Neon there. Pulse does get a key. And Pack is going to plant. But he's got a pretty good position here. All five players still alive. About to catch Swaggy on the flank. Swaggy gets hiccup though. Is traded out by Cilantro. Eton kills little Chad. Raze trades him out. It's a 3v2. Ohio has the numbers advantage. Yep. Oh, Neon oh, oh, is popping ult gosh. though. Makes it a 2v2. After killing Paka. And A main. Of, yeah, ult available. Raze might just stick to the fuse here. Matter. He so got it at half. Remaining. But Raze finishes out the round. Killing Cilantro. And defuses the bomb. Yeah, I mean, what a, yeah, what a close sequence of rounds there. The Ohio University crowd, though, is uh, not going to let that stop them. <laughs> of course, as usual, as usual. And again, at this point, it's 9-3, right? Just look for as many rounds as you can get. It, right? Ignore what the score is, right? It's 0-0 zero, zero in, in these guys' mind. You've been playing for so long, right? Keep putting your best foot forward and just keep trying at this point. One round at a time. That's all they need. Definitely going to want to convert on the pistol here, though. Yeah, no, I, I think, in all honesty, this round is a must at this point in, in the game for OU. And this is a hard A push coming from Kent State. And again, OU's on the defense here, and as I said early in the game, defense on Haven isn't really the spot that you want to be in. Recon Bolt let OU know that it's going to be an A push, and they completely rotate everyone over. Neon pushes through, gets a kill traded out by Eton, Packy gets a kill on Swaggy, and literal Chad, making it a 4v2. Only two left, they're both in sewers, rotating away. But it looks like they're faking the rotate, and they are actually going to... Oh, yes, the spike is down on A site. I guess they have to commit to A here. OU's just playing disciplined, holding their corners. Yeah, OU in a nice spot here. They don't have to do anything too crazy. Spike's down on site. And the kill on raise makes it a 1v4. Practically impossible here for a key. Getting a shock dart through. Just gonna yeah, hunker I mean, down in the corner. At this point, this is all but a formality. Oh, you just got the round in the bag. It's four players alive, and ooh, hiccup only gets them there. I mean, if you're a key, you're just trying to look for anything, but nothing really going to be given to you. Oh, you playing very disciplined, and only 14 seconds here. And Cilantro kills him to finish the round. Point Ohio. I can hear their comms over in the other room. They're still, uh, they're still excited. They're still pumped. Yeah, they no, know, I mean, they know they're still in it. Yeah, no, I mean, I again, Valorant, it's a, it's a shooting game, right? No matter what map you're on, always a chance to just kind of take over. And there's really not a player on either side that's 
really taken over the game. I mean, Ilonix, as we've said for this entire night, has been a pretty standout player for Kent State. Oh, absolutely. He's so having Swaggy's been pretty good, too. Oh, false kill Swaggy, though, instantly with the Outlaw. Goodbye here on the anti-eco. Ichan gets the kill on Ilonix. Yeah, I mean, just spam through the smoke, right? You have the better weaponry available to you, so why not? But Ray's Eton's gonna get Eton. caught out there. Cilantro trades out Ray's Hiccup. Oh, and OU wins the round, <laughs> losing two guns. Yeah, not too much of a fuss losing two players there. They didn't really invest too heavily into it, just stingers. Uh, you know, you're not gonna be too mad about that. And they're keeping it one round at a time. Score is now five to nine. Might see, I mean, okay. you see OU kind of playing really aggressively here towards mid too. They have three players stacked up over on that, that side of the map, so... Kind of interesting seeing what they got cooked up over there. This isn't a must-run round by any means for OU, but it would be really nice in terms of momentum and economy. Can stay looking at C, but they're not going to commit. Looks like they're going to rotate back through maybe B, but maybe A. Ohio doesn't have any forward position on A, so they're not really going to know that they're there until they are. I'm seeing five players stacked up in that A site for Kent State. Just the Cypher lagging behind, lurking around that mid middle Ooh, area. Hiccup caught one. Saw him there. And he hears the Neon. Takes sight. Vols is a very forward Ooh. position. Dashes out. Paka gets killed, though, by Alonix. Makes it a 4v5. Litter Hiccup stopped the plant, but gets killed. It's 4v2. 30 seconds left. And the plant is down. Planted. Only two players remaining for Ohio here. Yeah, Nitan has a rifle here, so he could make this a little bit costly, depending on if he can get his shot straight, but... Ooh, they don't get either, but that's fine. Yeah, that's a 10th picked up for Kent State. And now this is really where the game kind of gets decided, right? This is the first gun round of the half for OU. And there's an operator out on the field here from Pulse. Operator, no armor. Really know where Kent State's gonna go this round. Looks like they're just gonna default a little bit. Yeah, I mean this glass cannon is gonna be a really big part of the round here. Ooh, but he's revealed by the dart. Yeah, I mean that's okay, right? You you got yourself kind of Kent State probably not predicting an operator in this round. You would have yeah, liked to see an not. early pickoff from False. That's where you're getting a lot of the value from the op, but not the end of the world there. This breach is gonna take a. Cubby? No, never mind. He pulled out. They're just going to commit to A, it looks like. And no one from Ohio actually on A site. Yeah, I mean, this is a gamble that might not pay out for them. Not really able to hear that Al drone, so OU has no idea that Kent State's pushing up through A main right now. The dart reveals nothing in sewers. Kent State taking their time with this A push. Yeah, but that was oh, and they pull back. Yeah, that was that was a feign, and no one got faked out by it. Oh, you didn't even flinch. Not a single person moved off the. Oh, you still. Oh, here. Illinox gets a nasty pick on left. Hiccup though, and they're just flooding sights. Doesn't get the other. Eton kills him. Swaggy trades out though. Yeah, Eton does well to pick up one there in that type of position, but. You're going to need a little bit more if you're on the side of OU and Packer. That's Paca. just... Yeah, through the smoke there. It's a 2v4 and Fulce doesn't... He might have just saw Swaggy. Yep. Swaggy gets him, though. So Launcher is the only one left in a 1v3. Shadows traveling. Looks like he's going to grab the op, try to save. He's just going to run back to A site. Try to keep that alive. Maybe get a pick on anyone who tries to push him for it.
You can hear the Sova. Just about to peek the corner and he gets the kill. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's pretty big, right? Yeah. Doesn't look like it at this point in the round, but just being able to keep that operator and probably handing that right back to False here, yeah. Yep. Not good econ for uh, Ohio, though. They're going to have to buy a lot of sheriffs again. Kent State, meanwhile, has a full buy. And I mean, here we go, right? This is this is OU's kind of opportunity, not really. They, they need to step up here. Kent State has two rounds between them and... Oh, finally. this Cypher is going to see that it's a C-push. That's a lot of information granted that Neon's going to push up into Cubby, but... Aldrone's up. Neon's about to push through. Blind is out. Eton can't see anything. Cilantro can't see a lot. But he did see Illinix. Gets killed by Rays. And Illinix... Yeah. Oh, Illinix gets Hiccup and Little Chad gets Eton, making it a 2v5. And if you're Kent... Tough. I mean, if you're OU, that's just, that's just unlucky, right? And that, that's why I said this map is so defensively... It's so disadvantageous if you're on the defense, right? The only really shot they had in that round was false getting involved with that operator. And they just happened to pick the wrong site, right? Yeah. C site was hit. He was set up over at A, and that's what I mean. Where it's just hard to predict where the enemy's going to go when you have three sites like this, and the map's so open. Swaggy oh, yeah. is on a flank as well. Oh. Paka gets Alonix. This might be And brutal. Race makes it a 2v3. Something can happen here. Packet gets a third. It's a 2v2. Swaggy comes from behind and gets him. Get traded out by Fulce, but the round is not going to be going to Ohio here. There's not enough time. And some nice pickups in the end, especially from Pack. I mean, that was... Honestly, I was getting scared there, right? It had the operator fallen in that round. This is OU's lifeline, right? This is their only ticket back into this game is the operator in the hands of Fulce. But Packa did a great job to protect it, get a couple kills. Does it really matter? Not in the grand scheme of the game, right? Kent's still going to have money to buy for next round. They obviously still able to convert that round. And now this is kind of where it comes down to. It, it, OU has to be perfect for the next seven rounds. OU's got a full buy here, and they do have an op on the site that it looks like Kent State's going to push. It's Ball's a fast push. active in A here, which is where Kent State is located. Oh. Misses the shot, though. It gets him tagged he up, though. tagged him, yeah. He gets he raised the second. Pack gets swaggy. Yeah, and Fulcy got hiccup. Died. I don't know where that was at. Yeah, hiccup had died over across on B site. Interesting. Oh, and you can see here they're moving the spike towards B. False to get a Lonix, but a Aki traded him out. This is a little bit of a messy round. Yeah, he's on in a great position to find Aki here, but Paka. Paka. Oh, just saw him. Paka? And gets it ready for a headshot. It's a 1v3 here for Kent State. Little Chad is alone, and he was seen by the Owl drone. Ooh, fakes the plant. Runs towards C. Yeah, I mean, that's just the cipher all to kind of confirm the round. It should confirm the round for OU. They know where he's planting now. It's not going to result in as much value as they probably would have hoped for, though. Ohio's going to play together here. Not let them get picked off in 1v1 duels. It's a good cam to clear out some of the site. This breach's position still not noticed. A little bit of pre-firing coming from Ohio. Oh. They found where he's at. Little Chad gets one on Paka, but is killed, yeah. and Ohio wins the round. Yeah. And that that was just a that was just a stick from Ohio. As soon as that as soon as they had gotten on site, they knew exactly what they wanted to do, right? Absolutely, yeah. It was a one v three. They felt pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't need to take a fight. They didn't need to take ones. They just had one dude body blocking, and this is an insane kill. Yeah, back at here. Guy. That was that was crazy. Not getting caught by a key. Yeah, notices the gun, and a key just had a little bit of you know hesitation. Didn't really realize that Paka did not have a gun out. Didn't run up on him, kind of gave him time to pull out the Vandal, and I mean, honestly, that's as easy as they come. Alonix with no gun in this round, it looks like we're going to see a Neon ult. Swaggy got a pick on Eton in Garage, Neon drops the ult and takes Seasight. Exactly Not that anyone was there from Ohio. Watch them run. Oh, 
Ah, Cilantro gets killed by Swaggy after trying to ult to the other side to get a flank. Alonix gets Hiccup. It's not looking good. It's a 2v5 for Ohio. They need to win this round to stay in it. Kind of mean, with a spike planted. False. Can False gets a kill on Swaggy. Swaggy. He's nasty with that blade storm. Ooh, but Alonix is the last two to finish out the round. Kent State wins 13 to 6. Yeah, I mean, that was... I mean, that was a really hard-fought series for OU, especially from a team Absolutely. that, again, three brand new starters. We're hearing some applause out from the crowd. That wasn't a bad series at all. And again, I think Kent State, they were really good last year, probably a top three team this year. It wasn't a bad showing for the Bobcats at all. Not at all. Not at all. I think, uh, you know, they really, that, that, that game could have gone either way. You know, they're mm -hmm. going to learn from this. They're going to, next week, they're going to come into it uh, a little bit more prepared, maybe a little bit in a better headspace. I'm not really sure, but they they definitely know um, that they are competitive and what they need to work on to uh, s stay competitive moving forward. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a pretty resilient group too, right? They, they have a good coaching uh, staff, right? They know what they need to work on. They're going to come back. I'm not sure who we play next week, but same time next Tuesday, 8 p.m., more ASC Valorant. The Robcats hoping to find their first one of the season. Yes, absolutely. And thank you again to our uh, sponsor, OUCU Financial, as well as our partner, Red Bull. Yeah, and shout out to Kent State. You guys played, I mean, amazing. Going to be a top three team in the, in the league this season, I think. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. That was, that was a great showing from them. Yeah. All right, well, that'll do it for us. Again, catch us tomorrow, by the way, Rocket League, 8 p.m. Uh, Valorant Tuesdays, Rocket League on Wednesdays. Catch us tomorrow, same time. Same place. Yep. Go Bobcats. Go Bobcats.